The opinions and views expressed in the following program are those of the speakers and the host and do not necessarily reflect those of Yokely Scott Corporation and your sports network. Yeah, I've been closer to Jesus before, so can you help me out? Can you help me out? Am I on my own? Am I on my own? Or can you help me out? Am I on my own? Am I on my own? Or can you help me out? Welcome into a Tuesday edition of Running Point on YSNlive.com. Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. If you're in the market for a new or slightly used automobile, you definitely need to uh, check out the good folks at Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. They got a great sales department, great finance department, fantastic service department. Add it all up and well, you owe yourself a visit to Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town before you make the decision to purchase a new or slightly used automobile. With you till 3 o'clock, at which time DJ and the fellas will uh, take you through the 3 o'clock hour with Power Hour. And that'll be coming up at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Coming up on today's show, we will hear from Vindicator and Tribune Chronicles sports editor Doug Chapin. Uh, He'll be coming on the show today at 1 o'clock. All kinds of basketball from last night. First and foremost, a really scary scene yesterday at South Range High School where one of the members of the South Range Raiders uh, early on in the Uh, South Range Poland girls basketball game from South Range High School. Um, Early on in the game, one of the uh, players from South Range got tangled up, uh, her feet got tangled up, and went head first into the the floor, into the court. And uh, it was a scary situation. And obviously, uh, thoughts and prayers to... uh, Izzy Lamparty and, and the Lamparty family and all those at, uh, at South Range High School. It was a very, very scary scene. They, uh, they took her out via ambulance. Uh, obviously, the game was, the, the remainder of the game uh, was canceled. And just a really, really scary situation uh, at South Range High School yesterday. Uh, Coach Fischel uh, last night tweeted out uh, that. Uh, Izzy Lamparty does have a serious concussion. Uh, she was feeling much better. And as of about 10 o'clock last night, she was to be released from the hospital. Uh, that in a tweet, according to uh, the head coach of the South Ranger girls basketball team, Jeff Fischel. Uh, again, thoughts and prayers to, uh, to the Lamparty family, to South Range, their family. Uh, just a, that's one of those, it's one of those situations where Look, basketball, by and large, is a is a rather tame game compared to football. It, it's pretty tame. And you don't see those type of injuries very often. But when it does happen, it's frightening. And I can only imagine uh, the, the emotion that everyone was feeling yesterday when that happened. And it just, again, purely... Purely accidental. The, the feet get tangled up, and, and and you have nowhere to go, and you you trip and you fall face first uh, into the floor, and you know the hardwood floor it ain't giving away. Uh, it, that's you're not going to get any give on that. That's you know basketball's played on a very hard wooden floor, uh, and anyone that falls down on that floor, you're going to feel it, uh, and and you're really going to feel it uh, if you're head first into that floor and thankfully and again a serious concussion and that's something that you know hopefully 
uh, Izzy Lamparty is going to be able to get back on the floor. Uh, and, and hopefully uh, the precautions will be taking place and that uh, she's going to spend a couple of weeks uh, away from the game trying to uh, decompress, get everything, just like any other uh, professional athlete. You're, you've, you're going to have to pass certain uh, concussion protocol tests before you're able to get back on the court and 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 I know that uh, South Range will will definitely do that because you know they're the, the just like any other school you know they got protocols and everything to uh, to follow and scary sight no two ways about it that's a scary sight fortunately uh, it has uh, a happy ending um, as of 10 o'clock last night uh, Coach Fischel had sent out a tweet saying that uh, Izzy was to be released from the hospital shortly. Hopefully uh, she was released and um, hopefully on the road to recovery. Uh, But shout out to both South Range and Poland for having the uh, having the smarts to postpone the rest of the game. Um, That's South Range was not going to play, not not going to be in the right frame of mind to play basketball. When you see one of your teammates suffer a really serious injury, you're not your mindset is not on basketball. And kudos to Poland uh, and South Range both for realizing, hey, we have to play this game under a lot better conditions. Uh, so kudos to both teams for making sure that you know okay let's let's play this game another time we we have some other things that we have to deal with so uh certainly uh prayers are out to the uh, to the Lombardi family and and the South Range family and uh hopefully everything works out really really well uh for everyone uh yesterday high school basketball girls uh, actually there was one boys basketball game congratulations Struthers Wildcats continuing to impress they go up to a really tough environment and play not only a regionally well-known name but a well-known name across the state of Ohio good Catholic school up in uh, Cleveland Villa Angela St. Joe's Uh, the Vikings are a really good basketball program year in year out Cleveland Villa Angela St. Joe's year in year out is a really good basketball program and the Struthers Wildcats played the Vikings at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. That's where the Cavaliers play their games. And, uh, well, the Wildcats, uh, they went out to a 20-9 to first quarter lead, and they bombed Villa Angela St. Joe's yesterday, 74-49. to uh, That is an outstanding, outstanding victory. And once again, uh, balanced scoring. Brandon Washington had 14 points. Aiden Slocum had 13. Trey Metzka had 12. Keaton Kimball had 10. Uh, Ronnie Leonard had nine points. The beautiful thing about Struthers, and we've we've talked a little bit about this basketball team and the fact that they're not in the uh, the top 10 in the state of Ohio, according to the Associated Press poll. Just uh, it, it's unbelievably crazy. But again, uh, you know, nobody is recognized right now uh, in our um, uh, in our area from the AP poll. And, and and I'll repeat what I said a couple of weeks ago. Look, the, the reason why this is happening is is simply two reasons. Number one, we used to have four votes uh, in the AP poll: the Vindicator, the Tribune, Chronicle, the Morning Journal, the Salem News. They all had votes. Uh, so this area would have four votes. Well, the Vindicator and the Tribune Chronicle are one and the same, so two becomes one. Same thing in Columbiana County. The Salem News, the Morning Journal, they're basically the same paper. They're, they're, they're from the same company. Two becomes one. So now instead of four votes in the area, you're now down to two. That's reason number one. Reason number two, our basketball has had a reputation for the last nine or ten years to be substandard compared to the other areas of basketball across the state of Ohio. And because of that, the reputation precedes itself. You get the understanding. Uh, is, is that the right move? No, it isn't. It, it absolutely isn't. Uh, it's, the reputation is one thing. Reality uh, is, is quite another thing. And uh, certainly uh, the Wildcats are, 
are under the radar, and that's fine by me. And and I would imagine that it's fine by the Struthers Wildcats as well. Uh, you love to be under the radar. Oh, you 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 don't want to you know you, you don't want to give us any credit, or you think that we're you know the same old Mahoning Valley type of team. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, no problem here. We'll go out, we'll play our game, and then at the end of the game, maybe you'll think differently. And I would imagine that, you know, some folks at Villa Angela St. Joe's probably felt the same way. Oh, this is a team from Mahoning Valley. They're substandard compared to basketball in the Cleveland area, the Akron area, the Canton area. And by and large, the, the numbers would say that. But this isn't, this isn't a normal basketball team. This is a damn good basketball team. And just keep underestimating Struthers. And while you're at it, keep underestimating Boardman and Cheney, Lisbon, McDonald, a couple of other really, really good programs. Keep underestimating those programs. Boys and girls, keep underestimating them. By all means. Because I like that. I, I kind of like the idea of nobody in northeastern Ohio really looking at the Mahoning Valley and saying, no, no. It's the Mahoning Valley, their football. They don't, they don't have much basketball. Okay. That's good. And we'll just keep winning ball games. And hopefully, knock on wood, uh, the Mahoning Valley will continue to knock off teams that are known regionally and in Villa Angela St. Joe's case, statewide. Now, obviously, this is not the Villa Angela St. Joe's of the heyday of eight or nine years ago where they were winning state championships. I mean, it's it's still a very good program and a very good team and some really good players, uh, especially Anthony Ivey, who scored 23 points, uh, six three-pointers, by the way. But, you know, Keep underestimating our teams. That's I got no problems with that. Uh, girls basketball last night. Liberty got a non-conference victory over Richmond Heights. Uh, the Leopards improved their record to 4-3. and three. I, I made mention of this team. Just keep an eye on this program. This program has no seniors. Two juniors, one sophomore, and the rest of the team are freshmen. Keep an eye on this team. They are good. Saw them run Crestview, a veteran Crestview team. I saw them run them off the floor. Uh, this is this is a good Liberty team that's only going to get better uh, as as the games and as the years progress. Uh, this what would that be? The class of uh, what? Two thousand twenty four. Well, this is two thousand twenty one. So twenty two. Yeah, class of two thousand twenty four the freshman right now uh, that will be in the class of 2024. I made the comment a couple of weeks ago when I saw them beat Crestview. If the freshmen stay together, if the freshmen take the game of basketball seriously and work at their craft, this Liberty team could be making a trip to the state semi, or at least a trip to the final four. They could very well be playing a state championship game. They're that good. They just have to, you know, again... You take the sport seriously. You work on your craft in the off season. If they, if they can do that, oof, by the time these freshmen are seniors, oh, my God, they could be good. They could be really good. Now, can be and will be, that's where the work comes in. you got to work. If, if you don't work on your craft, then you're not going to be improving all that much, and that's anything in life. Right, everyone should know that by now. Fitch winner over Cheney last night, 77-22. to 22. Uh, Matthews gets a victory over Heartland Christian. Again, Matthews is now playing six games. Uh, we'll see how many games they can get in. Cheney girls have uh, played seven games. You've got 15 games left in the regular season. I don't know if they're going to be able to get 15 games in. And again, it's you, you don't want to burn anybody out. I mean, if, if you're trying, if you're hell-bent on getting 22 games and, and you have to play three or four games a week to get 22 games, you're going to be done by the tournaments. You're going to be burned out, and it's not going to work. We've mentioned this ad nauseum. Uh, player league games, if you can get a minimum of 15 games in, closer to 18, 17, 18 games would be the sweet spot. If you get anything close to that, minimum 15, 17, 18, somewhere in that vicinity, you're ready for the tournament. You're ready for the tournament. It's, it's, you'll, be, you'll be set to go. 
Uh, Newton Falls winner over Gerard. Newton Falls girls are now four and two. Gerard three and four uh, on the campaign. Really good test for Western Reserve last night. Western Reserve girls, Division Four. They went up a couple of uh, weight classes, and they took on a team that last year was in the state semifinals. You all know the story. 16 minutes before the opening uh, tip, uh, everyone's taken off the floor, and we went into COVID hell. Uh, Western Reserve was only down one point at the end of the third quarter. Actually, they were tied. I beg your pardon. They were tied at the end of the third quarter quarter against West Branch. West Branch was 11 and 4 coming into this game. Western Reserve was 8 and 3 coming into this game. Western Reserve was even with a really good Division 2 team. And this game was played at Western Reserve. So it's a home game, but still, you're even with a really good Division 2 program. You're you're yeah, you're 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 uh, doing a pretty nice job there. Now, the fourth quarter got away from them. West Branch outscored Western Reserve 21-10. to 10. They get the victory, uh, what, 46-35 to 35, uh, over Western Reserve. Uh, both programs. Uh, both programs are going to be, they're going to be pretty solid. <laughs> both programs are going to be pretty solid. Now, Western Reserve has, uh, they got a couple of very large hurdles uh, to get over, mainly McDonald. Uh, McDonald got a victory uh, last night. They're six and one, and, and five and zero oh in the league. Uh, and, and West Branch has some hurdles as well. I mean, both of these teams will most definitely be tested uh, when we get into the basketball tournament. Which, by the way, uh, where are we? The nineteenth uh, of uh, January, and the tournament is normally starting on the fifteenth of February. Uh, we're looking at uh, three more weeks. Uh, of actually one, two, three, four weeks. We're inside of four weeks left in the regular season because the tournaments would normally start on Monday the 15th. Some of them might start on Saturday the 13th, uh, but most of them starting on um, on Monday, February the 15th. So we're about four weeks of regular season basketball. Four weeks of regular season basketball. Uh, so, you know, Western Reserve has played 12 games uh, in the next four weeks. If you're going two games a week, that's that's uh, what? That's eight games. Uh, that's 20 games. Yeah, you're 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 within range of getting uh, of getting your regular season, uh, a full regular season. Uh, McDonald has played seven games. Okay, four weeks. Uh, two times uh, four is eight. Okay, you're you're looking at it at 15 games. I could see McDonald, uh, you know, again, play your league schedule. That's that's uh, 14 games. Uh, what have they played? Uh, two non-league games. So if you get your 14 league games in, you're looking at a 16-game schedule if you don't play any more non-conference opponents. You're, you're in business. That's, that's not a problem. Uh, you're, you're in business with that. Uh, so uh, congratulations to uh, to the to the winners. Uh, Waterloo knocked off Springfield last night. Canfield, a winner over Louisville, two teams in the YSN family. That game was played at Canfield High School last night. Uh, Youngstown East getting a victory over uh, Warren JFK. Uh, yesterday uh, during the daytime, uh, that was a, a day game uh, as we celebrated Martin Luther King Day um, yesterday. Uh, so uh, congratulations to the East High Golden Bears. They got a victory over Warren JFK yesterday. So uh, good stuff. Good stuff all the way around. Uh, and again, uh, four weeks left in the girls' regular season, five weeks left in the boys' regular season, and then we'll get started uh, in the tournaments. And hopefully, knock on wood, we don't have any problems uh, we don't get any uh, any other issues with COVID. We get it straightened out, and we uh, we play uh, to the conclusion of the season. And, and uh, hopefully, unlike last year, hopefully we will get uh, a uh, conclusion, a solid conclusion to the state champions. And uh, you know, we'll keep our fingers crossed and 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 hope that uh, that that stuff works out. 
yesterday, the uh, the Pirates uh, making a trade with the San Diego Padres. New York Mets got involved in this as well. Turned out to be a um, turned out to be a three team affair uh, with the uh, with the Pirates, the Mets, and the San Diego Padres. Uh, Joe Musgrove, who was a San Diego kid, he gets sent back home. And the Pirates pick up uh, four prospects from. And I don't necessarily think that uh, that um, the Bednar is no longer a prospect. He um, he got a cup of coffee in the major leagues. Um, Bednar, uh, David Bednar, Omar Cruz, Drake Fellows, Hudson Head uh, coming to Pittsburgh. Uh, and Joe Musgrove going to the San Diego Padres. And again, Musgrove uh, was born in Southern California. He returns to the scene of the crime. San Diego's got themselves a hell of a starting rotation. My God, that's a, that's, they, they are really hoping to um, narrow the gap with the Dodgers. And, and meanwhile, the Pirates, uh, they are finally coming to grips that, yeah, we need to tear it down and rebuild our farm system and get it right this time. Uh, now, the last time they got it right, stick with me for a little bit here, last time they got it right, um, I was I was their AA announcer in 2009, and their talent was a year or two from percolating the double A ball. They were just starting to get everything put together. And they, they had some kids. They they had some pretty decent kids. I mean Pedro Alvarez was uh was on the was on the twenty oh nine team and the, and I think the one other player, Jared Hughes, uh was on the uh, twenty oh nine team that that ultimately graduated and went to the major leagues and Hughes and Alvarez both had a, a decent career in Pittsburgh. Not a great career, but a decent career. Uh, but the the prospects behind them that were that were in low A and, and high A ball, they were uh, they were on the on the move, and that that's where you had in what was it twenty thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Uh, you had the Pirates three years of unbelievable baseball where they uh, went to the playoffs three straight years, uh, went to the NLDS one of those three years. Uh, it was really cool uh, to see everyone back at, at PNC. Uh, and then they, um, you know, obviously they, they didn't keep some of the veterans that, and they just, you know, tinkered around with, oh, we're, well, we're kind of okay. Well, we're not okay, but uh, yeah, I think we can do okay. And and then, you know, uh, Huntington and, and um, uh, you know, they, they fire Huntington, they fire Clint Hurdle, and they just, just determined after the 2020 season, the shortened season where the Pirates were not good at all, uh, Ben Charrington, the general manager, just basically said, listen, it's probably in our best interest now to trade away the guys that are probably not going to be here by the time we compete again. And you got rid of Bell, pretty decent prospects. Uh, you got rid of, of Musgrove last night. Four prospects for Musgrove. Um, and of the four, Hudson Head is the centerpiece, without any question. Third round pick in the 2019 draft out of high school. Uh, went to high school in San Antonio, Texas. He was a starting quarterback for Winston Churchill High School uh, in San Antonio, Texas. Interesting thing about uh, Hudson Head. He was an ambidextrous quarterback. Now think about this for a second. How freaked out would all of us be here at YSN? Because we broadcast you know, high school football games. This just in. Pretty sure most of you know this by now, but this just in, we broadcast high school football games. And we do a pretty nice job of broadcasting said high school football games. But can you imagine if one of the quarterbacks in our area was ambidextrous? Now, ambidextrous, the definition of that is 
throws with both hands. So picture this in your mind. Quarterback is rolling out to the left. Little roll out to the left. An RPO, if you will. And the quarterback rolls out to the left, and he wants to throw the ball. Cocks the left arm. Boom. 15, 20 yards down the field on a rope. Makes the catch. Fantastic. Move those chains. First and 10 from the 45-yard line. Hudson Head barking out the signals. He rolls to the right. Now does he throw left-handed? No, 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 no. This man's ambidextrous. So what's he going to do? He rolls to the right. He throws right-handed. Boom! 15, 20 yards down the field on a frozen rope. First down, move the chains. Can you imagine a quarterback who can equally throw with dead on accuracy with both arms? Well, I'm going to roll to the left, left-handed. Roll to the right, right-handed. That's Hudson Head. And oh, by the way, very fast. Oh, by the way, part two gets after it on defense. And oh, by the way, part three, he has advanced hitting skills. Now, here's the bad news. <laughs> he, he appeared very teeny tiny in rookie ball. He's got a long way to go. And, and obviously last year they didn't even play baseball. Uh, the minor league baseball didn't even play any baseball. So his, his growth was stunted uh, when they didn't even play ball in 2020. But Hudson Head is without question... He is the, uh, the centerpiece in this. But you did pick up some, some pretty interesting arms. David Bednar, uh, Pittsburgh-born. And I think it was pretty interesting that the, um, the Padres pick up a Southern California kid, grew up in the San Diego area, uh, in Joe Musgrove. And the Pirates brought home a Pittsburgh-born Western PA kid in David Bednar. Bednar was in the Padres organization uh, he was drafted out of a really tiny college uh, in, in western Pennsylvania in like the 35th round. Bednar has put up some really good numbers in leagues that are straight-out hitters leagues. California League and the Texas League are both flat-out hitters leagues where these guys are going to be just hitting the crap out of the ball it's just it's been known for forever in a day. California League has always been a hitter's league for whatever reason. David Bednar is a closer. And in the two years that he pitched in the California League and in the Texas League, hitter's leagues, mind you, both years, ERAs under three gave up one home run, and he struck out over 12 batters, uh, over nine innings. Got a w really good fastball. And uh, he's a wipeout uh, breaking ball as well. Uh, cup of coffee with the Padres. Struggled. Uh, struggled with the uh, with a cup of coffee. He has never pitched in triple-A ball. Uh, the highest he got was double-A ball. Uh, so you make a move from double-A to the major leagues, it, 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 you tend to, you know, get lit up the first time. Uh, Bednar is 20, he's either 26 or about to turn uh, 26. It's time for him to pretty much put up or shut up. And uh, Bednar comes back home. Omar Cruz, left-handed pitcher, starting pitcher. Uh, he is in, uh, I think, 20 or 21 uh, years of age. Uh, he topped out in 2019 in low A ball. Uh, again, like David Bednar, uh, power arm, uh, very, very good arm. Uh, guys that believe that, that he has middle, middle of the rotation type of stuff, possibly a two starter if everything falls into place. He's not an ace, uh, but, but has the stuff, uh, and, and the, uh, ability to max out as a two or three or four, uh, type of starter. And Drake Fellows, sixth-round pick in the 2019 draft out of Vanderbilt. 
Uh, now, he was a starter his entire three, four-year run at Vanderbilt uh, and, and pitching in probably the best conference in all of college baseball in the Southeastern Conference. Uh, there's a chance this kid becomes a relief pitcher because he does not have three pitches. Uh, his number one pitch is a slider. His second pitch is an average fastball and a, and a changeup that he's tinkering with. Pretty good chance that Fellows goes to the bullpen. Uh, you know, a 90, 91, 92, 92, 93 mile an hour fastball suddenly becomes mid 90s when you don't have to pace yourself. You know, you go into the bullpen and you're only throwing one inning, one and change, two innings tops. You know, and if you're pitching two innings on one night, you're not coming back the next night. So you can empty the tank. Uh, in If you're pitching two innings, you can empty the tank pretty quickly. Uh, and and know that you're not coming back for a day or two. Uh, Fellows will probably have a mid-90s fastball when he comes out of the pen if the Pirates decide to have him do that. His number one pitch is a slider, and it is absolutely filthy from what I've been, uh, from what I've been reading. It's absolutely filthy. Uh, it is a swing and a miss type of pitch. Uh, and if he, much like Joel Hanrahan, who coming out of college was a starting pitcher, or coming out of high school, excuse me, was a starting pitcher, and the Dodgers drafted him, and and he was a starting pitcher, and I remember he was in high A ball, and Kenny Howell, who was the pitching coach, had told him uh, prior to his promotion to double A ball, he he flat out said, and I was there for when when they announced him getting promoted, I I was in the coach's office, and he flat out said to him, he said, look, you may not be a starter as we journey toward the major leagues, your path might be as a relief pitcher because you don't have a third pitch. As long as you're flexible and, and comfortable with that, you might have a faster path to the major leagues as a relief pitcher. Same thing with Drake Fellows. Even though he was borderline dominant in a very good Southeastern Conference, he doesn't have three pitches. He has two. He was working on a changeup. So, the Pirates may very well just sit back and go, hey, you got a wipeout slider and you got a fastball that's right now in the low 90s, but if we put you into the bullpen, it can be mid-90s. Let's put you into the bullpen, get you a faster track to the major leagues, uh, and go from there. So uh, four kids. Uh, Bednar will probably be vying for one of the spots in the bullpen. Wouldn't surprise me if, if he uh, makes the trip up north in the 2021 campaign. Cruz and, and uh, Fellows and Hudson Head, uh, they're a ways away. Uh, Fellows has not played in the pros. Uh, Hudson Head was in rookie ball in 2019. Omar Cruz was in low A ball in 2019. So these three guys are probably two, three years away from denting the major leagues. But with the Pirates... And I hate to say this to Bucko fans, but uh, this this is now becoming pretty obvious. Pirates are not going to be contending anytime soon. Uh, their calendar, if you shot some truth serum into uh, Charrington and some of the other high, uh, high rollers in the Pirate organization, if you shot some truth serum into them, I'm pretty sure that they would sit back and go, our date of arrival or date of contention is going to be 2024 and if you can get 2023 okay but they're probably circling the calendar realistically 2024 as the first year that they uh, that they contend now the good news uh Brian uh Hayes who uh just hit the cover off the ball you know, with a brief uh, tour of duty in 2020 Uh, He's not a free agent until the end of, what, the 2026 season. Uh, So, you know, that's right up the alley of of Hayes. If if they compete in 2024, well, Hayes will have just hit his first year of arbitration. Some of these really good blue-chip prospects in the Pirates organization will have barely made it to the major leagues when this team is ready to compete. So, uh, you know, it's that's a tough pill to swallow for anybody. And, and look, the Indians are going to be doing the same thing. You know, you traded Lindor, you traded Carrasco. Not only is that a money thing for the Indians, 
it's the same thing. Now, the difference between the Indians and the Pirates, the Indians have a really, really good starting rotation. So the calendar or the timeline could be a year ahead of the Pirates. It just depends on how the Nolan Joneses and the other kids that the Indians have picked up, the everyday players that they've picked up in all of these trades, how, how many of them are going to be percolating in the minor leagues, getting to the major leagues, and how many of these starting pitchers are the Indians going to have when the time comes for this team to compete? It sucks to be a small market team in Major League Baseball, but uh, that's the reality, unfortunately. And the uh, and the big thing that you have to do, and the Pirates just, they were never really good at this. And I think that they're going to be a lot better at this. Uh, they, they were good for a year or two where the farm system was top 10 for a couple of years. And then those kids graduated into the major leagues, and, and that's when the Pirates started getting really good. The problem with the Pirates was while the three years the Pirates were playing really good, the farm system was never refurbished uh, because the organization didn't do a very good job of evaluating talent to the point where their farm system sucked when everyone from that three-year greatness graduated and into the major leagues. And after that, you didn't have much talent beyond that. A little bit, but not much. And I think this is where, with a new farm director, with new talent evaluators, with a new general manager, uh, you know, and I I know people don't want to hear this because you're probably tired of hearing it because it's only been, I don't know, 40-some-odd years since the Pirates have won a World Series and been in a World Series. Uh, you got to go a hell of a lot further for the Indians, but they've been in three World Series in the last 20, what, 26 years. They've been in three World Series. So that it doesn't sting nearly as much, even though they haven't won a World Series in, what is it now, 70... God, this is d- depressing as hell. 73 years this year? Ugh, horrible. Anyway, if, if you're a Pirates fan, it sucks. But if Charrington and the farm director and the evaluators of talent are as good as advertised, you're going to have a pretty damn good team in a couple of years, in a few years. Um, All the while, take the lumps and let's see what happens. While you're taking the lumps, you're going to be getting the first pick overall in the draft, like 2021. Pirates get the first pick overall in the draft. So it's, again, hit a home run there uh, and hit a home run in the 2021 draft. uh, And let's see how this turns out. All right, 330-886-0813, the MPV Vo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline, open for business with you till 3 o'clock. As we mentioned, coming up at 1 o'clock, we will hear from Vindicator and Tribune Chronicle uh, sports editor Doug Chapin. We'll get his take on the high school basketball and the winter sports, which, man, it it is ramping up in a big, big way. Ever since the uh, calendar went to January, we've been uh, been going 90 miles an hour in a 45-mile-an-hour zone, uh, and it's been kind of fun, Uh, kind of fun to have, you know, 10, 15-plus games on the network uh, every so often. And, and, you know, it's kind of fun to see – all of these, uh, all of these sporting events taking place. It's kind of fun to see it, and we'll definitely continue to um, broadcast a, a, just a ton of games, uh, and and hopefully, as I mentioned, hopefully everybody is going to get an opportunity to uh, to get as many games as possible uh, into uh, into their regular season. And again, perfect world all your uh, conference games and obviously uh, if you can get 15 games in uh, minimum I think that would probably be ideal for everyone uh, in terms of basketball uh, all the other sports you know try to get as many stuff in as possible and and then let's play uh, let's play some tournament ball uh, let's get uh, let's get into some tournament bowling tournament wrestling uh, a tournament hockey, 
Uh, I don't even know. Are the high schools playing hockey right now? I haven't seen many uh, many hockey games. Tournament swimming, tournament uh, wrestling, tournament bowling. Then you got the boys and girls basketball. I mean, that's the crux of winter sports right now for sure. All right, 330-886-0813. We'll take a time out be back with more. It's a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. 21 News. Let's get right to our top story tonight. More experienced reporters. A new Wilmington arrest. In Lordstown. Telling more local stories. We'll look at Baby efforts Boy is recovering from a broken. Around our Good valley. Community and Niles. Here, here in Young Town, right up. Because you expect it's important for everyone. No place like Young Town. More local news. In Mercer County Before Court. Become life 21 News is our valley's number one local news. Welcome home to a home made homier with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. Inspiration starts at BairdBrothers.com and is turned into reality when high quality hardwoods are delivered right to your home. Baird Brothers has the latest design trends, shiplap and skinny lap interior siding, antique oak rustic flooring, and, well, you'll find them all at BairdBrothers.com. Ordered easily, delivered conveniently, enjoyed comfortably. BairdBrothers.com. WRS Wealth Advisors, the area's premier wealth and retirement specialists, located on South Avenue in Boardman. Hi, this is Jim Myers with Myers Family Insurance your local Medicare and retirement resource. We're excited to have sports back. Whether you're on the field or cheering from the stands, sports unifies communities and brings hope for the future. We're all one team working together. At Myers Family Insurance, we know the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. Hi, I'm Colin Chupa. And I'm Kelsey Clem from K-Squared Marketing. Our boutique marketing firm specializes in media planning and buying, public relations, event marketing strategies, and strategic sponsorships. We can integrate our services with your existing game plan, or we can be your entire marketing team. Your goals, our game plan. Let's, Let's win, win together. together. Call K-Squared Marketing at 330-623. 2730 or visit ksquared.marketing to learn more. When, when looking, looking for, for home design, design inspiration, inspiration don't, don't just be inspired, inspired. be Baird inspired. inspired. Whether, Whether new or remodeling, Baird, Baird Brothers, Brothers has the latest, latest trends, trends like shiplap to refresh your home. home. Go, Go from, from inspiration, inspiration to installation, installation with, with our, our wide selection, selection of in-stock in -stock American hardwoods. hardwoods. From, from the, the rustic, rustic charm of antique oak, oak to, to the, the warmth, warmth of the traditional, traditional cherry, Baird, Baird Brothers has what you need to make your home inspiring. Baird, Baird Brothers, our family's heritage, your family's home. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Point, presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Dan Bertolini will be joining the show at 1.30. Uh, YSU baseball schedule just got released, and there are plenty of changes uh, to this schedule. And uh, we will get uh, Coach Bertolini's um, views on this schedule. Uh, the Penguins will be opening up in Alabama on February the 19th, Friday, February the 19th, as they will play a single game against Troy. Uh, that is a down in Troy, Alabama. Doubleheader on uh, Saturday and a single game on Sunday, February the 21st. And then they will go to Nichols State. believe that is in Mississippi. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I believe... Nichols State is in Mississippi. Uh, I'm going to have to uh, do, some, uh, do some checking uh, before we get uh, Doug Chapin on uh, with, um, with uh, our uh, little conversation with him at 1 o'clock. I believe Nichols State is located in, um, in Mississippi. Anyway, it's a three-game series with Nichols State. Single games on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, February the 26th, 27th, and 28th. And then league play will begin uh, the next weekend as uh, the Penguins will play a single game at Purdue Fort Wayne on March the 5th, doubleheader on Saturday, March the 6th, and a single game on March the 7th. Uh, the next weekend, a four-game series with Wright State uh, down in Dayton, a single game on Friday the 12th, doubleheader on Saturday the 13th, 
and a single game on uh, Sunday, March the 14th. Uh, Non-conference affair with St. Bonaventure uh, that next weekend, Friday, March the 19th, and the doubleheader on Saturday, uh, March the 20th against St. Bonaventure. That's actually going to be the home opener uh, for the uh, Penguins. And then Wright State comes to Youngstown, uh, actually Eastwood Field and Niles, if we're going to be technical, uh, Friday, March the 26th, doubleheader on March the 27th, and a single game on March the 28th. Uh, then the uh, UIC uh, team comes into town, University of Illinois, Chicago, April Fool's Day, Thursday, April the 1st, doubleheader on Friday, April the 2nd, and a single game on Saturday, April the 3rd. April the 4th is Easter. That's why they're not playing the game on uh, on Sunday, April the 4th, because it's Easter. Uh, those four games will be played at Eastwood Field. Uh, then on Friday, uh, the Penguins go to Milwaukee. Uh, Friday, April the 9th, doubleheader on Saturday, April the 10th, and a single game on Sunday, April the 11th. Uh, the Penguins go to Northern Kentucky. Friday, April the 16th, doubleheader on, fr- on uh, Saturday, April the 17th, and a, and a uh, single game on Sunday, April the 18th. Oakland comes to uh, Eastwood Field on Friday, April 23rd, doubleheader on the 24th, and Sunday, April the 25th. And then uh, the Penguins go to Chicago to take on UIC. Friday, April the 30th, a doubleheader on May Day, uh, Saturday, May the 1st, and a single game on Sunday, May the 2nd. And then they um, conclude... Well, actually, they don't conclude the regular season. I take that back. Uh, you'll play a game uh, against Purdue Fort Wayne at home on Friday, May the 7th, doubleheader on May the 8th, and a single game on May the 9th. Uh, the next week is an off week. Now, that could very well be a makeup week, uh, depending on how many games are lost, and that's a really good decision by uh, the Horizon League if that is their decision to have that off week. Uh, where the, um, the the next weekend, which would be, what, Friday, May the 14th, Saturday the 15th, and Sunday the 16th, uh, they're off, which, again, that's a good decision by the, by the Horizon League because, I mean, let's face it, you're going to be seeing a lot of games in March that, you know, in the Midwest, March, a uh, lot of snow outs, a lot, uh, lot of rain outs, hopefully, Knock on wood, Mother Nature cooperates. Uh, and and uh, more importantly, knock on wood, this whole thing gets taken care of where we're not stopping the season uh, w- with COVID and, and whatnot. Season ends, uh, the weekend, or the regular season ends, uh, Thursday at home against Milwaukee on May the 20th, doubleheader on Friday, May the 21st, and a single game on Saturday, May the 22nd. I would imagine that conference tournaments – begin that next weekend. Uh, the team that wins the regular season would host the Horizon League tournament. And then the following week uh, would be the Field of 64. Uh, the weekend would be double elimination. Uh, and, and again, Field of 64 is 16 sites, four teams per site, and the four teams are playing a double elimination tournament. Uh, the winner in each of the 16 sites, then uh, it becomes one of 16 teams where you play in a super regional. You're paired up with another team, and you play a best of three. And whoever wins the best of three in the super regional, you go from 16 teams to eight teams. Those eight teams will go to Omaha and play in the College World Series, a double, double elimination tournament. Uh, one would imagine, uh, let's see, the uh, the weekend of uh, May the 29th. Let's do some arithmetic here. If the season ends on the 22nd of May, that would mean that the weekend of the 28th, 29th, and 30th is going to be uh, the Horizon League championships. Uh, the uh, first round uh, of the of the NCAA tournaments, uh, the 16 sites, four teams, uh, that will be determined on the 4th, 5th, 6th, and, and possibly the 7th. Uh, the Super Regionals would then be the 11th, 12th, and 13th. And the College World Series would begin in mid-June. 
and, and go from there. Now, interestingly enough, um, this coincides with the draft league. That's the league that, if you remember, the Mahoning Valley Scrappers are no longer a Cleveland Indians affiliate. Uh, they're now a part of a six-team draft league where the six teams, uh, I think there's four teams or four or five, no, four teams from the New York Penn League, one team from the uh, South Atlantic League or Carolina League, one of those leagues, and then uh, another team that was in the Eastern League, uh, the AA affiliate of the Yankees, Trenton Thunder. Uh, These six teams would have a bunch of kids that are going to be playing baseball uh, and their main thing is you're trying to impress the scouts. Think of it as a, um, well, the NFL has the combine. Uh, and, the, and the NFL has a combine for um, for um, the uh, NFL uh, draft choices. Uh, the, the, the players that are potentially trying to get a, uh, trying to get a much better position in the draft. And and their goal is to is to really do well in the combine. Well, this draft league is going to be it's going to be fifty some odd games, uh, which is essentially going to be on a game by game basis a combine. Uh, but you know you play fifty some odd games trying to improve your stock while playing against the best of the best. Uh, and, and most of, the, if not all of these kids, are going to be drafted in a very small 20-round draft. Most, if not all of these kids, are going to be drafted. Uh, so this draft league is going to be pretty prestigious. Well, uh, I- again, if the College Baseball World Series is in mid-June and it ends somewhere around the 25th, 26th of June, okay, now these kids that were in the College World Series are going to be essentially playing a couple of weeks in this draft league uh, to see you know, if they can improve their stock. Uh, so it's, it's going to be fascinating to see what happens. But uh, if you'll notice, uh, working back to the YSU schedule, Mississippi State is not on this schedule. Uh, Mississippi State, uh, and, and we'll get uh, the manager, um, uh, Dan Bertolini, to talk a little bit about this. Uh, I'm a little surprised uh, that Mississippi State is not on this schedule, uh, and you know we'll we'll, uh, we'll see what uh, what transpires there. Uh, Forty game conference schedule. Forty game conference schedule, and you have ten non conference games. So if the Penguins, knock on wood, if they're able to play the entire season, which begins on Friday, February the 19th down in Alabama as they take on Troy, uh, it's a 50-game schedule, 40 conference games, 10 non-conference games. You'll play a four-game series against Troy uh, down in Alabama. You'll play a three-game series at Nichols State, and I believe Nichols State... Uh, is is in uh, Mississippi. Don't quote me on that. Uh, as a matter of fact, let me um, let me. Uh, actually, it's in Louisiana. I knew I was going to be wrong. Thibodeau, Louisiana, is where uh, Nickel State is. Uh, it's in it's in Louisiana. Uh, so uh, my apologies. Uh, Nickel State is in uh, Thibodeau. Uh, Louisiana, which is halfway between uh, New Orleans and and uh, oh gosh, it's I think it's halfway between New Orleans and Baton Rouge, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but Thibodeau, uh, Louisiana, is where they are. So you're gonna be you're gonna be looking at a uh, a trip to Alabama, uh, and you're gonna be looking at a trip to uh, Louisiana, uh, and and those are the uh, those are the two non conference teams. Uh, that YSU will be playing to start out the 2021 campaign, a four-game series against Troy and a three-game series against Nichols State. Uh, And then uh, the Penguins will start league play with a four-game series at Fort Wayne, Indiana against uh, uh, Purdue-Fort Wayne, a four-game series at Dayton against Wright State, and then the final three non-conference games will be played at home as the Penguins take on St. Bonaventure 
Uh, and St. Bonaventure is in upstate New York, in uh, Oleon, New York. Uh, so uh, that's it. Your, your two long road trips to begin the year will be Troy, Alabama, and Thibodeau, Louisiana. Uh, two teams that are you know, they're, they're down in the, uh, in the heart of Dixie. Uh, so it hopefully, knock on wood, uh, the weather will cooperate the weekend of uh, February 19th through the 21st as well as the weekend of February the 26th through the 28th. Knock on wood, uh, we have some, uh, some decent weather uh, those two uh, weekends uh, when the Penguins travel to Alabama and Louisiana. All right, we're going to take a time out on the other end. We will hear from the sports editor of the Tribune Chronicle as well as the Vindicator. Doug Chapin will be... Uh, we'll be joining me coming up at the top of the hour. We'll talk some high school hoops. Uh, we'll also uh, get his take on, uh, once again, uh, nobody uh, being represented uh, from boys basketball in our area in the A people. I kind of, I, I'm kind of embracing this now. I, I don't know if if um, some of the coaches are are even at this point really care about it. But I, I'm kind of embracing this. If I were if I were a basketball coach at Struthers or Cheney or McDonald or Boardman or you know some of the other schools that are good, solid programs, I would kind of be embracing this whole. Oh, you're you're not in the top fifteen, top sixteen in in the state of Ohio in any of the divisions. Okay, we got no problems with this. Look, and again, I said this at the top of the show. It's no disrespect. It's, you know, there's a couple of reasons. Number one, the area used to have four votes. Now it's two. It used to have single votes from the Journal, the Salem News, the Vindicator, and the Tribune Chronicle. Well, the Tribune Chronicle and the Vindicator are the same, so two becomes one. The Salem News and the Morning Journal are the same. They're owned by the same company, so two becomes one. So now instead of four votes, you have two votes. One of the reasons why. The other reason, and it's simple. The other reason is our basketball, it, it, the perception is our basketball is not as good as Canton, Akron, Cleveland. Uh, and, and it's, you know, we're more known for football. Okay. But listen, and, and the numbers are, are such where we haven't had a breakthrough. It's the last time the boys basketball uh, team in this area went to the state tournaments, you've got to go back to 2011, 2012. Uh, when LeBray went to the state semifinals. It's been a while. But I kind of like the idea of our area being under the radar. I kind of like this idea the more I think about it uh, because schools like Struthers can go to Quicken Loans Arena and take on a really good St. Joe's team and do that to them. Uh, and, oh, wait a second. This team is actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but by all means... Keep underestimating the programs in, in the Youngstown area. Just keep doing it. Keep underestimating the Boardmans, the McDonald's, the Lisbons, the Springfields, the Struthers, the Cheneys, the you know and the other programs that I you know I can uh, Ursland, West Branch, Poland. There's a lot of programs. Just keep underestimating all of them because I get a strange feeling that we're going to have some fun in the uh, in the districts and regional tournaments this year. I, I have a feeling we're going to be playing some. Pretty meaningful basketball this year. All right, take a time out on the other side. Doug Chapin from the Tribune Chronicle and the Vindicator will be joining me. It's a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet and Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Baird Brothers remains your source for fine hardwood products. For the time being, we're open for customer pickup only on weekdays, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturday from 9 a.m. till noon. Place your order online at BairdBrothers.com. Baird Brothers, for the place you love. Quality, customer service, and integrity. Those are the four words that have driven our success since 1957 at Joe Dickey Electric. Joe Dickey Electric is one Mahoning Valley landmark business that stays current with the requirements of our customers. Family owned and managed, we are an electrical contractor and energy solutions provider. Every member of our team adds to his or her skill set through ongoing training. Residential, commercial, industrial, automotive, and more. We keep ahead of the needs of our customers with a fleet of more than 50 vehicles and 24-7 emergency service, so you're never left in the dark. 
The 4M company, being an architect and construction manager for over 40 years, has had the opportunity to use many different electrical businesses for our projects. The depth, quality and knowledge and attention to detail displayed by Dickey Electric makes them stand out above all the rest. For state-of-the-art expertise and a timeless commitment to our customers, contact Joe Dickey Electric. We are everything electrical. I went to Greenwood Chevrolet because I was really interested in looking at the tracks. Because I wanted my dream truck. Because I've been going there for 20 years. I think whenever we go there, whatever car we're looking for, they have tremendous inventory. If you're looking for people who care about you, Greenwood is, is the place to go. You know, it's like family there. The girls know me in service. It's Miss Kim in the Tahoe. I'm really happy that I went to Greenwood Chevrolet. Because they really went the extra mile for me. Now we're going the extra mile for you, only at Greenwood Chevrolet. Local teams are heating up the hardwoods, and you can keep up with all the action on and off the court with Five Guys Hoop News, all season long on 21 Sports. Planning a project around your home or rental property? Trust the electrical service to the local experts with 62 years of serving the Mahoning Valley. Joe Dickey Electric is your local go-to source for responsive, reliable residential electrical work. From everyday maintenance and repairs to new installations, electrical upgrades, and safety inspections, no job is too big or too small. Call Joe Dickey Electric today, 800-549-3976, or visit DickeyElectric.com. That's DickeyElectric.com. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austintown. Uh, it's Tuesday. It's a little after one. It's time to bring in our good buddy from the Tribune Chronicle and the Vindicator. He is the sports editor. He is Doug Chapin, and he joins me, as always, on the MPV Vo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. Doug, how are you today, sir? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. So uh, in the first hour, I was talking a little bit about this. And, you know, we can all sit back and lament and groan and whatnot uh, because uh, none of the boys' teams are in the AP poll this week. Uh, and the third, uh, third AP poll that's out, and, you know, we've, we've had uh, a smattering of teams. I'm kind of enjoying the whole idea of – every team in the area now basically sneaking up on the out-of-town teams. And, and a little great example, yesterday, Struthers Wildcats took on Cleveland Villa Angela St. Joe's. Villa Angela St. Joe's, year in, year out, is a regionally uh, and a statewide name brand. Uh, they've won more than a handful of state championships. Struthers absolutely destroyed them at Quicken Loans Arena, Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, whatever you want to call that place uh, up there, up in Cleveland. They destroyed them yesterday. And and I, I'm now starting to actually embrace this whole concept of, okay, we're going to be unknown and, and people aren't going to really think too much about our area's basketball teams when we go out of the area. I'm good with this. We'll, we'll sneak up on people then. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just a, a, a thoughtful attitude to take. I mean, it's, I don't know how many people are paying attention to these AP poll anyway, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you like to have these teams recognized. I think I go to Strutter's third in the state this week. Uh, I don't know if they're getting any other votes from anyone else. I, you know, we put out the information to the other voters, you know, records and that kind of stuff. So, I don't know. But, I mean, there are a lot of really good teams out there even outside of Northeast Ohio. So um, that's part of the... Oh, there's no question. There's there's a lot of great teams in, 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 uh, in the state of Ohio and in Northeastern Ohio in general. There's there's a lot of great teams. There's no no two ways about that. But, you know, I just find it interesting. Uh, you know, people are going to uh, not really think too much of the Mahoning Valley. And, and again, you know, the reputation, it, it's... As I said yesterday, a lot of people believe perception is reality. Well... You, you might have a perception that our area is behind the eight ball when it comes to Canton, Akron, and Cleveland, but that gap has shrunk considerably, and it continues to shrink with AAU being very prominent in the Mahoning Valley. And, and frank, uh, frankly, a lot of really good coaches in this area and, and some kids that have decided to play basketball. Yeah, I mean that's 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 what it takes too. I mean you've got to have that uh, that uh, summer um, experience beyond with your own high school team 
um, simply to, to, to see, you know, where you're at as an individual compared to others around the state, you know, around the uh, region. Um, so, yeah, I, hopefully that is the case. That it's, it's getting better you know, around here. Um, in, in the end, we, we end up looking at, you know, how we fare at the regional level um, to see how we uh, our high school teams are doing. But, uh, uh, yeah, I, I hopefully that's what I think the uh, sport is improving around here. Yesterday afternoon, a really scary scene at South Range High School early in the South Range Poland game, which ultimately uh, was not played uh, due to this injury. Uh, Izzy Lamparty uh, had her feet tangled up and wound up tripping and falling face first into the hardwood floor, uh, knocked herself out. Uh, she, uh, she was taken out of the gymnasium by an ambulance uh, suffered a serious concussion. Now, late last night, uh, the South Range head basketball coach, Jeff Fischel, tweeted out uh, that uh, she was to have been released from the hospital shortly. That tweet was at about 10 o'clock last night, so hopefully, fingers crossed, Izzy Limpardi uh, is out of the hospital and on her way to recovery. But, you know, we, we sit back and, and covering the game of basketball compared to football, you normally don't see serious injuries in basketball uh and, and and you know but when you see an injury like this it is frightening when someone uh, takes a tumble and and falls onto the hardwood floor head first that's frightening yeah i am you know sure it was for those who were there um uh, yeah and, and you know we we forget that these are high school kids who you know are going to classes and and, you know, they deal with all the things that uh, teenage kids deal with. Um, but as long as an injury like that, uh, you know, makes it that much more uh, difficult. Hopefully she uh, recovers. And, uh, you know, whether she plays or not, is that's not as important as just the full recovery. And uh, so, yeah, we, we hope she, uh, she does recover well. You know, and, and kudos to both South Range and Poland. Uh, look, I mean, especially Poland. They could have very easily said, no, let's play basketball. Well, I mean, you know this as well as I do. You we're dealing with high school kids. I mean, even if you had professionals uh, on the floor, they would have been shaken up. You, know, you just you can't get past the image of seeing a teammate lying motionless on the court. Uh, even if you're a college uh, athlete, a professional athlete, that's just something that you're not going to be able to get out of your mind, and, and your mindset is not going to be to want to play basketball. Your mindset is naturally going to be on your teammates. So kudos to both Poland and South Range for uh, coming together and realizing, hey, let's, let's play this game in a better time period when we're both thinking basketball and not what just transpired. Yeah, I agree. That's a, that's a good point that uh, you know, they, they – you know, decided to do it that way. Doug Chapin, Tribune Chronicle and Vindicator Sports Editor, joining me on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. Why issue men and women, especially the men, they had an awful lot of, of uh, publicity. Uh, they were picked to finish in the top three in the, re- in the um, uh, preseason poll. Things have not gone well for the Penguins. Now, in truth, uh, Darius Quisenberry has missed a, a number of games, and he continues to rehab his ankle uh, back in his hometown of Dayton. Uh, who knows if uh, if Darius is going to be coming back anytime soon. Uh, Penguins are 3-7 and seven and, and near the bottom of the Horizon League. Uh, now, the good news, eight of their final ten games are going to be played at Beagley. The bad news is, man, do they have a lot of ground to make up. Yeah, and, and the one thing about the Coach Calhoun that's impressed me so far with the time he's been here is he, he's not going to worry about what he has no control over, and, and he passes that on to his players. So they're going to go out and play whether they've got Quisenberry or not, um, and they're not necessarily going to you know, say, oh, we, we can't win anything until he gets back. They're, they're, you know, they're going to go out and, and, and do the best they can. Um, uh, yeah, it, it'll help be at home. I, I mean, the whole thing's been a... Been a uh, um, a nightmare of circumstances with uh, being stopped for COVID for a while. Um, you know, other other teams in the league have played their full slate of games, um, and and so that's that's hurt the uh, the fact that they got stuck with a bunch of road trips right off the bat uh, wasn't helpful. So yeah, I, I, I you know 
I think they'll recover. They've got to, uh, they'll have to, you know, obviously to catch up. They've got to sweep a couple of these um, double headers per se. Uh, you know, the back to backs that they're uh, been scheduled that's the way it is. Um, and then they've got to split the rest of them. They can't afford to, you know, lose two on any more weekends. Um, and do you know? I was trying to figure this out or, or look it up. Is everyone in the horizon going to be in the tournament, or they? they I believe I believe everyone gets into the tournament and and what they'll do with a 12 team field is obviously the top four will get a buy into the quarterfinals five would play 12 four would play 11 six would play 10 uh, well, now, hold on a second uh, yeah five would play 12 six would play 11 seven would play 10 eight would play nine uh, the lower uh, the higher seed gets the uh, gets the home court advantage. Uh, what do you play the semifinals uh, in the uh, uh, in in the um, in the home of the higher seed, and then the semifinals and finals would probably get played in in Indianapolis. Are they? Do you know that they're going to go to home sites, or are they going to go to bubble? Or I, I'm going to I'm going to assume that they go to home sites. I, I'm, I'm going to assume that they do. Okay, and 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 just the fact that everybody gets in changes your thinking about the regular season. Um, you don't have to necessarily worry as much about wins as you, as you do. Like in, in the Washington case, they've got a bunch of freshmen that are pretty talented that, you know, they haven't had – they didn't have the non-conference schedule to, you know, give those guys some time. Now, uh, in, in the case that they're going to get in, and, you know, they're not going to – they're not battling for a one or two seed or anything like that. You know, sure, you want to win them, but, but this gives you a, a chance to, to do that. Um the, uh, and you're going to need that come tournament time, too, um, if, if you expect to do anything in, in the tournament. So, excuse me, the, uh, yeah, I, I, it's just a, it's been a, a whole uh, lineup of bad things happening to the program, the men's program. Uh, oh, the women's, too. They, they had two shutdowns. Um, but, uh, yeah, hopefully they can come out of it and, and, and you know, even if you go 500 the rest of the way and you're playing well going into the tournament, I think that's a, that, that would be a plus. Yeah, as long as you're playing well going into the tournament and get everyone healthy and get Darius Quisenberry back, uh, then I think that everything should be should be okay come tournament time. And, and you know, you roll the dice and see what happens. But, uh, you know, I certainly believe uh, with a healthy Darius Quisenberry, uh, this team is still very much a top four, top three type of uh, type of team in the horizon league and then you look at the women's side you know the first three games of the year you know again they were behind the eight ball and and predictably uh, Youngstown State looked looked like a team that hadn't played all year a uh, lot of turnovers well in the last three games John Barnes Club has done a really nice job they've won three games in a row now all of a sudden you're looking at this team and why is your women could go on a run here because they're playing some teams in the bottom half of this league? Yeah, I mean that's the uh, uh, you know and they'll take the same strategy. I would assume is to you know you try to get you want to win that first game on the weekend that gives you a chance for a uh, uh, a sweep, but then you know that the team that lost the first game is going to be trying even harder to, to avoid a sweep. Uh, so. Yeah, the, 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 I think the coaches are starting to figure out the, the strategy for playing these weekends home and or I mean, not home homes. They're um, supposed at the same place. Um, if, if you're home, it's nice because your uh, you know your kids are home. Um, and, and, but you could also argue that if you're on the road and, and you lose on a Friday, you've got your kids in the hotel and, and you know you can get them together and you can focus on what they need to do for the for the Saturday games to to win that one. Um, but yeah, the women are playing well. Like you said, a three-game winning streak, and uh, uh, Coach Barnes has really done a ter- terrific job since he's been here. Um, you know, he takes what he's got, uh, talent-wise, ability-wise, he makes it work, um, and, he, and he's done a, a pretty good job recruiting too. Too, I would say um, they've got a team with some seniors on it, some some experience, and some youthful. Um, uh, the uh, positivity that you have from, from young kids who, you know, haven't been through it before. Sure, there's some inexperience, which can be a negative sometimes, but it can also be a positive in that they're, uh, they're excited, they're, they're all fired up, they're, you know, uh, you, you get that out of it, too. Well, 
Well, he certainly has an interesting freshman in Neka Obeizer. For the second straight week, she was named the Horizon League Freshman of the Week. Uh, first recruited player out of the state of Minnesota. And I got to wonder uh, if Coach Barnes is going to go back into the uh, into the state of Minnesota and try to get uh, another three or four kids that are as good as Neka Obeizer because – uh, boy, if you can uh, if you can get some talent, Obeizer type of talent out of that state again, my goodness, can this kid play? She's the first player ever to be recruited by any school. She's the first uh, YSU recruit from the state oh, of Minnesota. Okay, okay. So, I mean, if if I'm Youngstown State, I'm going back to the to the state with ten thousand lakes and say, hey, give me about seven or eight more of uh, of your talented kids that are hopefully as good as Obeizer. Well, I think that's one of the uh, one of the things about playing in the Horizon League. It gives you a a uh, well, and all the coaches are using the same uh, spiel for recruiting. Is that if you're from Minnesota, uh, her you know parents or her family and friends could come see her play in uh, Wisconsin when they when they go up to Green Bay or uh, uh, Milwaukee. Uh, they could see her in you know Chicago. So there's there's that um, because the league is spread out nicely, you can uh, recruit and, and use that as uh, you know, if you get somebody from, uh, uh, you know, Tennessee or um, Missouri, you can you can use the fact that you know that's pretty close to uh, fairly close to Northern Kentucky. They can come see their kids play in, in Chicago, uh, uh, Indianapolis, um, Fort Wayne. So yeah, that I think that helps. Um, you know, it, it's almost the same footprint, if you would, as the Big Ten has, and uh, and the Mid American Conference actually for that matter. Um, so they can use that to their advantage, uh, you know, getting kids from, you know, you wouldn't necessarily think a Minnesota kid is going to want to play at Ohio, but understanding that they'll have a couple games in Wisconsin kind of helps that. Oh, no question about that. And, and and John Barnes has done a tremendous job of getting kids out of the state of Wisconsin. Uh, he's got a tremendous pipeline working uh, in the state of Wisconsin, and, and uh, he just continues to pluck out some really, really good, uh, really good talent from that state. Well, he coached up there, too, didn't he? I think it was the Green Bay. Line. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, and that's that's a, a big part of the coach's uh, recruiting ability. Is first, when you get started, you've got to make the contact with the high school coaches and the high school uh, community, and and even the AAU community for uh, to that uh, respect. And you know, obviously, he's done that well. He, he's uh, respected and well liked up there, and, and uh, that helps with the, uh, the recruiting circle. Doug Chapin, our guest, he is the Vindicator and, and the Tribune Chronicle sports editor. Uh, you see his work in both newspapers and a fantastic job. Joins me, as always, every Tuesday at this time on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. Uh, Doug, over the weekend, the Browns uh, play their, their first AFC Divisional Playoff game in quite a while. Uh, they wind up losing to the Kansas City Chiefs at Arrowhead, a game that, you know, they, they had their chances, unfortunately, uh, they, they couldn't get it done. I didn't particularly care for the play calling in the first half with Chubb and Hunt. Uh, well, actually, Chubb getting six carries, uh, Kareem Hunt getting no touches whatsoever in the first half, which was head-scratching to say the least, uh, but plenty of opportunities. And, you know, you, you look back on the season, and I'm sure that some Browns fans might be a little disappointed in the loss on Sunday, but if you look back at the total picture you know, 11 regular season victories. You go to Pittsburgh, you knock off the Steelers for the first time in Pittsburgh since 2002. I would say that um, Browns did pretty well for themselves this year. Yeah, I think they, uh, I don't know that many Browns fans predicted 11-5. and five. Um, Most of us would have been happy with 8-8, eight 9-7, and, eight, nine and, seven and, and actually looking like we knew what we were doing out there. Um, and and Sunday's game, it came down to if you can change the outcome of three or four plays, you know, they got a chance to win that thing. Um, it, and now that's the way it is in just about every NFL game. If it comes down to the fourth quarter, it's a one score game, it comes down to three or four plays. Um, and, and so the fact that the Browns were able to play with that team, um, you know, the defending Super Bowl champs to that degree is, is certainly uh, positive. The, uh, the other thing I really liked about it is the Chiefs scored touchdowns their first two possessions, and they didn't score another touchdown after it. They, the, the Browns defense did what it had to do after the first two possessions, which was 
make him get field goals uh, rather than t- score touchdowns. And, it, you know, it got him to a position where, you know, if the offense could have, uh, uh, you know, taken that last possession and done something with it, they, you know, had a chance to win the game. So, um, you know, and, and this is a, it was, I think this is a Browns team that is, had plenty of holes in it, too. Um, they, um, you know, they, I think they're, they're set in the front office and head coach now, and they don't have to, you know, that's the thing that Browns fans at this time of year, most of the, in recent years, we'd have been wondering, you know, who's going to be the new GM, who's going to be the new coach. Uh, now there's some stability there, and uh, you know they can look forward to uh, the draft and the free agency and all that kind of stuff. You know, I know there's some folks that are probably wanting the defensive coordinator to be uh, kicked out of Dodge, but I would sit back and say. I want to give him another year simply because that defense was not healthy. Keep in mind, there's a couple of kids that were expected to be in the defensive backfield that didn't play at all this year. Uh, You had a lot of injuries. Uh, Now, I think that it's going to be a draft heavy on the defensive side of the ball, if not the entire draft on the defensive side of the ball. And the Browns have a lot of money uh, in cap space left over as well. Uh, I would give this entire coaching staff uh, some more time, especially the defensive coordinator. Now, obviously, you're not going to be getting rid of Stefanski anytime soon, and I I love what he has done. I'm not necessarily in love with the play calling. Uh, Sunday's game was not uh, was not an abnormality. He has done that on a couple of occasions. Not not too impressed with that, but as far as the, the coaching goes, you know, you, you you know, I, I'm good with that. If, if you're a Browns fan, you got to be happy with Stefanski. Uh, but I, I think that Joe Woods definitely deserves another year because he was coaching a bunch of guys that were pretty much hurt all year long. Well, he didn't have a preseason to, uh, you know, put a system in. So, um, you know, they did that all by Zoom. I, I think that, to me, if you want to blitz a lot, and that, I know that's what most fans are saying, oh, we need more blitzing. You got to be able to cover man to man, and we didn't have anybody covering Tyreek Hill man to man, and we didn't have anybody that after that. If, you know, if we you put Sean Wade, not Sean Wade, <laughs> um, the other Ohio State corner, uh, what's his name? Anyway, I mean, we, we could put somebody on Tyreek Hill, but then we don't have anybody to cover the other pass guy, Hardman. Uh, so, I, I, I'm, I've always been a, and maybe it's from following the Browns in the mid-60s, is bend but don't break. Give up yardage, give up first down. When they get down to the red zone, and they didn't call it that back then, uh, when they get down in the scoring area, make them kick a field goal rather than score touchdowns. Or, or you make them drive it all the way down the field, and you, you know, wait for a turnover, or you try to force a turnover. I, I've just never been one for, um, you know, you, I think you can be too aggressive on defense football and it can hurt you bad uh, whereas if you're uh, I don't want to say passive but if you're more of a contained type of defense um, then they've got to make the, the other the offense has to make a lot of good plays to beat you um, and so you know I, I don't know you know he, what he had you, you're right we, we haven't seen him with a full team that he's supposed to have and they had a bunch of injuries they kept dealing with um, so you know we'll see after they uh have the draft and the free agency. We'll see where they're at, and uh, you know. But yeah, I, I would certainly think he needs another, gets another year, if not more. I, I had no problem with his his uh, strategy uh, during the season. Should be an entertaining next couple of years uh, as uh, Baker Mayfield is continuing to play in his rookie contract, and and obviously next year the the Browns are going to have some decisions to make. Uh, you know, I mean Nick Chubb is uh, is going to be in that decision uh, process as well, and and some of the young kids that they've drafted. You know, when they get off their uh, when they get off their rookie contracts, uh, are you going to sign these guys to a second contract, which is inevitably going to be a lot more money? Because uh, everyone's going to want to be paid. Uh, you, you know, are, are the Browns going to be able to do that? This is this is going to be a fascinating couple of years to see how many of these kids we see in a Browns uniform in two, three years down the road. Yeah, certainly. That's the, I mean, they, they will have some decisions. That, and that's the case with Kansas City Chiefs, it's the case with everybody. That you, you get to that. If you put together two or three really good drafts in a row, then that sort of, you know, three years later, you're kind of in a bind as to um, 
regarding the uh, salary cap. And, and, you know, that's the way why a salary cap is put in place. That's the way the NFL wants it. They want to keep keep things, um, keep the team close, and they don't want anybody just, you know, dominating. <laughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, they'll have some, some uh, um, problems. I, you know, there are certain trends in the NFL that, um, like uh, running backs, uh, um, running backs and linebackers are seem to be diminished in uh, worth in NFL front offices, um, and I don't think I don't know if that's a more of a, a, a trend of the analytics uh, people or if that's I, it, it, I would it's been my experience that that's been going on for 15 years or so now, maybe even 20. Um, that once a running back gets I don't know a certain number of carries in in professionally, then you know he suddenly loses value. Um, you know, we'll have to see what the Browns think about that with Chubb because you know he's certainly been a workhorse, and uh, um, you know that, that the, you know how they react to him, and, and when he gets to his rookie end of his rookie contract, we'll, we'll see. And regarding Hunt, I, I think that's the way they've done it most of the way. They, they Chubb's had the first quarter, Hunt the second, Chubb the third, Hunt the fourth. Um, most of the season they've, they've done it that way just to keep keep them fresh. Um, but yeah, I, I suppose I could quibble with some play calls, and we don't know how many of those have changed the line of scrimmage. Um, so you know, there may have been some hunt plays that uh, that got changed because of the, the defense. Um, but uh, you know, it, it, there's a couple been a couple games where that's happened, where the, the, the defense um, pretty much said we're going to stop the run and we're going to make Mayfield pass. And so the Browns did that in the first quarter. Uh, I can't. I'm trying to remember the other opponent. But, uh, you know, you have to be able to do both. You can't just, you know, say we're going to only run and, and, and expect to be able to push the team down the field. Um, you you have the success in the running game because you're able to pass. You have the success in the passing game because you're able to run. It's always the way it's been and probably always will be. Doug Chapin from the Tribune Chronicle and the Vindicator joining me on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. Does it feel like you're going a million miles an hour since the – calendar flip to January with everyone now back into scholastic winter sports and playing every night too yeah exactly it's, it's, it's ridiculous yeah and, uh, we're still short-handed with with uh, Sean Vargo having left and uh, you know, we're, we're doing our best to try to get many games covered and you know and the reports that come in from the coaches we're trying to get those in there too uh, yeah there, there's you know uh, 49 schools with, with girls and boys that you know over uh, 90 teams, and we, who was it, Newton Falls, we, uh, we covered them last week, and they said that it was their fourth game of the week, and um, they had four more this week. So then that was the boys' team. So, you know, we're getting, we're getting hammered every night. Usually Mondays and Wednesdays and Thursdays are kind of like Saturdays isn't too bad, but uh, a lot of boys' teams are playing on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Saturday, and a lot of girls' teams are playing some Tuesday and Friday games, but they normally don't. So it's it, yeah, it's been quite a uh, quite a, a uh, struggle to try to keep up with everything. Um, we don't get every game reported, so we're having trouble. We're, we're trying to catch up our, our records with everybody who, who's you know won how many games. Um, so yeah, it, it's a uh, it's been a difficult uh, difficult uh, season uh, thus far. But uh, for the, the you know the kids, we hope we're we're uh, Getting the uh, covering the right teams and you know making sure we get everybody a, a, a chance to be in the paper and uh, you know we're doing the best we can there. Doug, always a pleasure. Look forward to catching up with you soon, brother. All right, take care. You got it, Doug Chapin, Tribune Chronicle and Vindicator Sports Editor, giving us a chime uh, every uh, every Tuesday in the one o'clock hour, courtesy of the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. We're going to take a time out on the other end. Going to hear from Dan Bertolini. The YSU baseball schedule is out. It's a little bit different than what we uh, discussed the last time Dan was on the show. Uh, we'll talk about the 50-game schedule coming up after this. Stick around. 
Hello, I'm Greg Burbick with G. Burbick Farms. For the last 100 years, my family has farmed in Columbiana and Mahoning counties. I began raising cattle in 1996 with the goal of providing a better product for you and your family on the dinner table. Our grass-fed and grain-supplemented black Angus beef were raised with no hormones, steroids, or antibiotics. We are known for our hometown-friendly service and incredible tasting products. We are locally owned and have customers across the tri-state area. Our products go from our farm to your family. Stop by our farm on New Buffalo Road or visit us on the web at gburbickfarms.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. G. Burbick Farms, it just tastes better. Hi, this is Tommy Clem, owner of WRS Insurance Solutions. WRS Insurance Solutions is a local, independent agency that specializes in life, Medicare, long-term care, and disability products. Call us at 330-953-3722 or visit us at wrsinsurancesolutions.com to learn more. Good luck to all the student-athletes in the Valley. Right now is a great time to get more for your trade-in at Tri-State Ford and drive home in a newer pre-owned vehicle. Choose from our great selection of new Ford models or pre-owned vehicles. Plus, get the Tri-State Ford Advantage, including a 10-year, 200,000-mile warranty and more. At Tri-State Ford, we'll pay you top dollar for your trade, but you don't have to purchase one of ours to sell us yours. Customer focus, community driven. Tri-State Ford East Liverpool or visit TriStateFord.net. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Point on YSNlive.com. Hello. Uh, well, Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. And joining me on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline, we bring in the skipper, the manager of the YSU baseball program. I know they call it head coach in college ball. I don't buy that crap. It's, it's, he's a manager. He's not a head coach. Uh, Dan Bertolini joining me on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. What's up, Skip? Oh, nothing. Just uh, just excited to get back after it today. Okay, so uh, we we get a 50-game schedule out of the deal. Uh, schedule announced uh, earlier today. 50-game schedule. You're going to have 40 league games, 10 non-conference games, uh, the big part of the non-conference schedule is the absence of Mississippi State and the addition of Nichols State, which is a school in Thibodeau, Louisiana. Uh, tell everyone a little bit about the uh, non-conference schedule and why Mississippi State's no longer on the schedule. Um, yeah, so we open up at Troy, and uh, in uh, Troy, Alabama, and then head to Nichols State, which is in Thibodeau. Uh, Louisiana, right outside of New Orleans. So uh, originally we had Mississippi State, but with everything going on and there were some scheduling issues, a conflict, we had to make a, an adjustment. Um, I'm sure it won't be the first one we have this year with with uh, with the schedule. It's been kind of wild, I think, for everybody. So just happy that we're able to get a quality opponent in week two. Um, we also have St. Bonaventure um, at home, and uh, technically, I think. Um, we, we still, we, and, and not technically, but we do still have an open weekend that uh, next last weekend that we're looking to add. We have a couple teams we're talking with right now, so we should have should add one extra week there um, to la the next to last week of the season. So we should hopefully either have a 53 or 54 game schedule, depending if we can get four games that last weekend. And um, we're uh, we're excited about about the schedule. Okay, so that kind of empties out the theory that I had because I had noticed that you guys had the second to the last uh, weekend of the season open, and I thought perhaps the Horizon League purposely left that open for everyone to play potential makeup games if if uh, if there are any. Well, no. See, the way that it works right now is there's only one team per buy every week, so 
um, uh, except for opening weekend. There's there will be three teams in our conference that have a bye um, on March 5th, and then every week just one team has a bye. You get two byes throughout the course of the year. So our first bye is uh, when we play St. Bonaventure, and our last bye will be that weekend. And we just we got the schedule late, so we're just trying to figure out, you know, trying to talk with some teams to to, to get that finalized. Well, it makes some sense now. Uh, 40 league games, and you guys are going to be able to play Wright State two times, which is good. You get four games in Dayton, uh, March the 13th, or March 12th, doubleheader on the 13th, single game on the 14th, and then they turn around and come up here uh, March the 26th, doubleheader on Saturday the 27th, uh, Sunday the 28th. You guys are playing UIC a couple of times as well. Uh, this is Purdue, Fort Wayne, a couple of times, Milwaukee, a couple of times. This is a pretty good schedule, Skip. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, you know we knew that there was going to be. Uh, we've always talked about having a trying to have a balanced schedule in the Horizon League. So because only four teams this year will make it um, to the to the last weekend into the Horizon League tournament. So you know trying to have a balanced schedule, but with everything going on, um, it, uh, you know we just we knew that we. Playing games was a priority, so um, each team's got a little bit different schedule. But um, you know, we're we're happy with with where we're at and get an opportunity to go ahead and, um, and play. And this will probably be the most home games we've played ever um, with uh, with this schedule the way it is because of the way our buy set up. Hopefully, we can get that last weekend at home as well, and uh, we would play seven home weekends and seven road weekends, which would be uh, probably the first time in program history we'd be able to play. Uh, potentially 20, 26 home games. So it's exciting. Uh, a lot of good baseball at Eastwood Field. And if we can get that last weekend at home, we play the final three weeks of, of the season here at Eastwood. All right, let me ask you, uh, in, in previous years, uh, the team that won the regular season would host the Horizon League tournament. Is that going to be the same uh, the same formula this year, Skip? Yeah, that's the same, same formula. Um, instead of in previous years, we had that uh, – Basically, it was like wild card, wild card day, or with single elimination, three would play six and four would play five. Um, they got rid of that, so now it's just the top four seeds double elimination tournament starting on Thursday. Um, and we used to start on Wednesday. Now it'll start that Thursday, the, the week before uh, that weekend of Memorial Day, and um, and it'll be at the highest seed. Yeah, that'll make things pretty interesting, and and obviously the the regular season. Uh, and look, if you don't play your forty games, uh, I'm assuming you're going to go highest percentage then. Yeah, it'll go to winning percentage, and that's probably. I'm assuming at some point that'll be um, that'll that'll come into effect. I mean, that's why we scheduled so many conference games. Um, that way, you know, if something does happen, we're still the ability to play. Normally, we played thirty conference games, so it gives us a little bit of a cushion just in case something would happen. Um, where one of the teams in our league wouldn't be able to play, and they've given us some flexibility as well. So if, if we're supposed, if we're scheduled in a conference game to play Wright State or UIC or whatever, and, and their and their team is unable to play due to COVID, the Horizon League's given us flexibility to really schedule whoever we want. We can schedule another conference opponent if someone else has a non-conference game, or we can schedule non-conference opponents for those weekends. So I'm sure there's going to be some some shifting of schedules throughout the year. Uh, I told our guys, the team that's the most flexible and can, and can, uh, you know, kind of handle adversity and handle this. will probably have the, the greatest, you know, the greatest uh, success at the end, just because of, you know, you have to be very flexible. We might be scheduled to go somewhere and end up playing here against a team that we weren't supposed to play. So uh, it could get, it could get crazy, but we're hoping that, you know, everyone's able to stay healthy and safe throughout the year, and we're able to play a full 54-game um, schedule. Well, speaking of flexibility, Skip, I mean, you got four games uh, on on a uh, on a conference weekend. Uh, you get an opportunity to uh, play most of your roster in that four-game series. You you get an opportunity to see uh, most everyone, and and that's uh, that's going to bode well. Uh, for the uh, for the team to show off the, all of the all of the depth that Youngstown State has. Yeah, and it's gonna it's gonna be really interesting because the Horizon League has put on a twenty seven game or twenty seven player travel roster restriction. So um, when you go on the road, you can only travel with twenty seven players. 
and when you're at home, you can use your, the, the, the roster limits. Um, so, and it is going to be a little bit challenging, too, with no midweek games. Normally, you know, some of the younger guys get to play or some of your, some of your other pitchers that didn't maybe pitch on the weekend get that opportunity to pitch during the middle of the week for developmental purposes and, you know, just, just for health purposes, and, and you're taking away those games. So those, those weekend travel rosters and, and, and for everybody and, and, uh, and weekend rotations are going to be that much more competitive and that much more important. So, um, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see how this plays out in the, in the Horizon League. And Dan, let me ask you, and we're speaking with the manager of the Youngstown State Baseball Program, Dan Bertolini, and obviously with the midweek games gone, uh, you want to keep your, your pitching staff fresh. You, you certainly want to make sure that everyone gets an opportunity to, uh, to pitch. You know, the, the inner baseball guy in me is, is now thinking, are we going to be seeing a lot of inner squad scrimmages during the course of of the weekdays instead of prolonged practices in, in that way to keep everyone fresh and to keep everyone in game mentality. Yeah, 100%. Um, we will probably at least do one, if not two. Uh, they might be smaller ones throughout the, throughout the week, but one to get our guys, to get our hitters and pitchers, um, you know, some work. Uh, and, you know, for our hitters, the, uh, to see live pitching throughout the course of the week so you're not going an entire week without you know seeing guys and and there's going to be times too where if you're if you're starting pitching you know, I, I think that's a big strength of ours we have good starting pitching um if you're if you're if your guys go deep into games and pitch into the seventh or eighth inning uh even some of your best bullpen arms might not get as much work as they're used to so now you go a whole week without without uh without throwing um, so that's kind of like your your prep work in the middle of the week to kind of get back into it, so you can throw the following week. So I think there's, and, and the other thing is too, you know, with contact tracing as you see in high school sports and and in college sports and in the NFL, you know, professional sports with with COVID and contact tracing, you, know, you could have a, a set group that's pitched a lot or, or played a lot, and next thing you know, you lose three or four of those guys. So it's so important that everybody is prepared to play at a high level because. You just every year you don't know when it's going to be your shot, but especially this year, you just don't know when it's going to be your opportunity to go in there and, and compete and play in meaningful games in the Horizon League. And I would say, you know, the little tip for the folks that may not be starting uh, as far as everyday players are concerned, you use the scrimmages in the middle of the week to play as hard as you can, as good as you can, because look, I mean, if they get if they're on fire. In the in the in the midweek uh, scrimmages that you guys are planning on doing, I know full well that a guy like you, who's who manages by his gut and looks at someone, oh my God, he's on a tear here in these last two last two scrimmages. Oh, I'm going to put him in the starting lineup. I got a gut feeling this guy's going to continue to get on a tear. So these mid these midweek scrimmages that you're planning on, not just for for keeping everyone fresh, but for kids that may not be getting a lot of playing time, may not be getting a lot of at-bats. Boy, if you catch fire in the middle of the week, you might make uh, you know yourself and the coaching staff say, we got to play this kid because he's on fire in this midweek. Yeah, and, and, and you know, our ultimate goal is to win, you know, and, uh, and that's not just my goal. That's our, that's our team's goal. Is, and, and we're fortunate that we have a, a group of guys that are, that are 100% committed to that, and they understand that every day is an evaluation, um, and that uh, you know that you can't take days off. Everyone's got to be full go, 100% all the time. And um, you know, we, we we let them know. We constantly are evaluating them on where their progress is and what they need to work on, and kind of where where we see them. And and then uh, you know, if if someone if someone's doing that in the middle of the week, it'll be pretty obvious. It'll be pretty obvious to everyone. I won't have to do a whole lot of coaching there that'll be pretty obvious hey this guy needs to play so hopefully um that's the mentality that our guys have that every day you know whether it's a midweek game whether it's a whether it's a weekend game uh whether it's practice like they are they are competing for that spot no matter if they're hitting four 450 or they're hitting 058 like they're always know that you know they're giving their best effort in practice or, or, or in their squads it's as close to a day in day out grind of professional baseball as you're going to get and and obviously uh 
on top of all of this, the kids are going to the classroom and they're getting their they're getting their uh, their school work done. Uh, and when you're on the road, and I've seen this, you you got the study table and you got the kids all doing their thing on the study table. And I remember last year uh, in South Carolina, uh, you know, everyone is uh, is hanging out at, at Starbucks and they're not, they're not uh, shooting the shooting the crap. They're they're with book in hand getting their classroom work done and that's that's the the thing that everyone is cognizant about yes you're playing baseball you're also making sure that you've got your your homework done and making sure that you're above grade point average so you can stay on the baseball team academically yeah we're fortunate we have a great great group of student athletes that do that that take you know that's part of our recruiting process is taking your academics as serious as you do take baseball no matter what we're doing we're trying to be excellent at it and our guys finished um i can't remember how many straight semesters now with above a 3.0 i think we had a um a 3.24 cumulative gpa we had uh five 4.0s we had 31 players above a 3.0 this last semester so academics are extremely important uh, but the nice thing is with no midweeks uh you're not going to be missing class for for games so, you know, we should be able to do even better in the classroom. Um, you know, we're not going to spend as much time away from campus. And, you know, with the, with the new kind of protocols involved, there's a lot more um, flexibility with online classes and some hybrid classes. So our guys have a little bit more flexibility with that. But, um, but yeah, I think you know, academics are important, and our guys do a great job of, of – uh, you know, staying up on and making sure that they're excelling in the classroom. Dan, as far as recruiting goes, it's no secret and, and, and you know, painful for everyone, but 2020 we had no spring baseball uh, in the state of Ohio. Uh, the state of Pennsylvania, I believe they followed suit as well. Uh, what was recruiting like and, and what are you envisioning uh, recruiting to be like this year as we hopefully go into – a full baseball season on the high school fields. Yeah, recruiting was exceptionally difficult this this past summer, um, and it's continuing to be um, to be difficult. Just with you know the extension of the dead period and us not being able to get out and see players play. Um, so like I, like I told many people, I feel terrible for the 2021 class and um, the 2022 class because. You know, usually your junior year in high school is your big year, and um, a lot of times your sophomore year is now your big year, and those guys were kind of robbed of those situations in the, in the last year. So it's changed, um, but, you know, the people that are able to adapt and uh, are, will be the ones that can thrive, uh, a lot of video stuff. And the, the, I think the last thing that's really going to put a tough wrench into things is the, is the new transfer rule that I think will pass where it will be a one-time – transfer exemption so now you have all these kids that don't have anywhere to go that are in high school and then you have anyone anyone in division one can transfer within division one schools and 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 play right away they don't have to sit like they used to and then you have all these other kids that are already in high that were that that were got an extra year of eligibility last year that would have been seniors this year now have graduated and now can you know potentially grad transfer so now you're going to have grad transfers in the portal you're going to have regular transfers in the portal and then you have a whole bunch of high school kids that don't have places to go as well as junior college got their year back so now they you know it's it's a it's a mess um it's a mess as far as recruiting goes it's good for baseball because all levels no matter what level you're at there's going to be great players that are available to help you um but for for coaches it's a it's kind of a nightmare um trying to worry about your roster limits and scholarship and you know trying to it's hard to find find people. Just you know, we haven't been able to a tournament to go see players. You're relying on on recommendations and videos, and not really getting to see them play. So, um, you know, I, I just I, I we're very cautious. We're very uh, um, we take a lot of caution in, in when we're recruiting, just because we we really want to get to know our players. Um, you know, I think we've done a great job. Our staff has done a great job of evaluating and, and identifying players that fit what we're trying to do. And that's more challenging when you don't get a chance to go see them play live. But we've adapted. I thought, you know, I thought we brought in, you know, we, our recruiting class is large, but we brought in some really good, talented players this year. 
and uh, to help us, and we're continuing to to do that. I'm sure we'll bring in a few more guys throughout the rest of the year and really start to look at the 2022s here moving forward. You know, Skip, you brought up an interesting point. Uh, obviously, it's it's a mess. There's no two ways about that. But in the grand scheme of things, college baseball is probably going to be at its strongest point in quite a long time. And I'm not just talking Division One, because you know as well as I do, uh, there are, much like scouts, there are kids that are that are left in the cracks for whatever reason. You will have Division One type talent going to Division Two and Division Three programs. College baseball as a whole might be, in 2022, it might be at its strongest point that it has ever been in, and that's saying an awful lot. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't agree more um, with, uh, you know, with, with where college baseball is at. Unfortunately, it's unfortunate, uh, you know, I think there's always been great players that have slipped through the cracks. No matter, you can't see everybody. And there's players that are late bloomers, that develop late, that, you know, there's there's situations at every school where hey, it might not be the right fit or might not be the right time or they get to go to another place and end up having – and that's one of the most important things when you're a prospective student athlete is you find the right fit. You know, you find the right place that, you know, that, that wants you, that you can see yourself grow and, and you can see yourself develop. And, and um, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of great players that, that get through the cracks and go play at other levels that, you know, there's great baseball at and can have great careers. So it should be interesting. Uh, especially even in the junior college uh, ranks, junior college baseball is going to be really good, really, really good for, for the next uh, however many years that it takes to sort this thing out. Skip, how important is a, a organization like the B-League then? You've got a summer league organization for perceived, it's perceived to be the best of the best in, in the uh, three-county area and some other kids that, that come in from western Pennsylvania. How important is it for you from a recruiting aspect uh, to, to see B-League baseball and, and how special is that for this area to have – this particular product, which gives you an opportunity to be able to recruit some of those kids? Uh, yeah, I mean, we obviously we've talked in the past, you know, um, this, is a, this is a rich area for baseball. Uh, we have a lot of good, talented players in this area, and um, we're fortunate that we have some great leagues right here in our own backyard that we can go watch kids play all summer. Uh, but there's great tournaments all over the place, and um, but it, we're, we're fortunate that, that we have some great, some great baseball here and, and, um, I don't see it decreasing anytime soon. There's a, uh, there's a lot of good, good players in our community. Uh, I'll tell you what, this spring, uh, can't come fast enough because, well, first of all, I hate the winter. Uh, and, and secondly, uh, the, the, uh, the spring can't come fast enough because that means baseball season. Okay. Alabama, uh, and then, uh, Louisiana Thibodeau is, uh, not a bad community. I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll throw that out there right now. Not a bad community. So it's, yeah. and it's And it's close enough to New Orleans where you can have some fun. I mean, it's going to be probably 75 degrees. You're, you're in, uh, you're in, uh, you're right on, right on the Gulf. And uh, it's a good baseball program. They have a turf field that we should be able to play, uh, play our games. And we're excited to head down there. Uh, I've never been to Louisiana, so that'll be a state I could check off the old the old list. Um, but uh, first first weekend, first is first. We'll be focused um, all our attention on on Troy and, and trying to prepare for them here when we get started in uh, in about a week week and a half. We'll start team practice and and we'll be preparing for them. And it'll be a little bit more like football this year because you know you're only playing one opponent per week, so your scouting reports are going to be a little bit different. You'll be able to really focus your attention. Sometimes it's hard. You're focused on, you know, you play a, a team on the weekend, but you have two midweeks that so you have to be prepared for and try to scout those ones and then try to get prepared for the weekend. So now at least um, it'll be a lot more like football week where you can focus just on one team and get ready to go. You know, interesting you bring up football. You're going to be sharing the spotlight with the YSU football program, and yeah, that's something that's going to be somewhat abnormal because normally you – you don't see football being played in the springtime unless it's a spring practice. These guys are going to be playing their football schedule because of what happened in the fall. 
I think it could. I think it could add some. Uh, it's going to add a ton of excitement. We talked last week um, just about the excitement of all the programs playing at the same time. But you know, football, you know, playing. I think it could provide some unique opportunities potentially for for us to maybe get some extra fans out to our games. You know, um, you know, they can go to. They can see a bunch of events in a, in a small period of time, and you know, maybe we play after the football game or before the football game. So. On Saturdays, you can come out and see us play later in the day, or um, you know, maybe before football, uh, we can try to make a package of it so you can see uh, all the all the sports teams playing one day. Pretty soon, they're going to be hiring you in the marketing department, Skip. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of good ideas. Well, I got a and lot of ideas. I don't you, know if they're all good. You, 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 you and Rick Love got to uh, get together and and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and and have uh, have an idea to uh, you know discuss those ideas. Hey, uh, two things that I will say before uh, before we let you go, and we're speaking with the manager of the YSU baseball program. Uh, hard to believe you've never been to Louisiana. Uh, so, as someone who's been to Louisiana far more often than I than I care to admit, uh, I have two words for you: gumbo, number mm-hmm. one, and po boy, number two. Yeah, game I'm, changers. I'm, I'm down. I'm a uh, I'm a big uh, food connoisseur of any type. I, I love. Uh, really all types of of, uh, of food so I'm, I'm looking really looking forward to, to getting some some Creole and some uh, some you know some um, Louisiana uh, food down there because uh, I, I see it on all the channels uh, the food network and all this stuff I want to taste it you know in the bayou I yeah. want to know you know what it's like so make, I'm excited. Make, make sure you have plenty of ice water with you if somebody gives you oh, a spicy the gumbo. Spicy, hey, the spicier the better. I love <laughs> I love the hot stuff. I'm all in. Yeah, and, and make sure you give our anti Youngstown pizza guy plenty of gumbo and uh, yeah. maybe maybe that'll uh, maybe that'll give him an attitude adjustment. I, I'm still pi- to- I'm still pissed at him sitting back here and talking <laughs> bad about our pizza. Get get out of here with that crap. I'll, I'll tell you what I I was in. Uh, I was in Amish country not too long ago in uh, Sugar Creek out that yeah. way. And I had some delicious pizza out there. They had some really – there was a place out there. They're, all their food is so good in, in, uh, uh, in Amish country. But, man, it was, there was some good stuff. Oh, yeah. Ain't no doubt about that. All yeah, right. But Youngstown's got great pizza. We all know that. Yeah, I know, of course. I mean, that's just yeah. – you know, when, yeah, when, 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 I, when I hear an out-of-towner sit back and, and, and talk bad about my pizza, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not too happy with that. I mean, that, that's hey. – uh, you're, you're, now, you're now challenging our bread and butter here. Well, it's coming from a guy that that they, that, that threw snowballs at Santa Claus, so you know, I take it with a grain of salt. There. <laughs> oh God, I can't wait, Skip. Always a pleasure, sir. Looking forward to the season. Absolutely, looking forward to seeing you. All right, see you, Dan right. Bertolini, the manager of the YSU baseball team, uh, joining us and uh, joining me. No, not us. Well, split me in half, and I'm still you know, 100 and some odd pounds. I, Neither here nor there. Uh, Dan Bertolini joining me on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. It'll be us when Anthony comes back uh, tomorrow to join the show, and it will be good to see Anthony Hartwig uh, back on the other side as we uh, probably go at each other, uh, playfully, of course, because his Chiefs are playing my Bills uh, for the AFC Championship game. Still no word on Patrick Mahomes. I I got to believe he's going to play. I, I just I would be stunned if he doesn't play. Uh, I would be a little disappointed if he doesn't play because, you know, I don't want to hear any excuses. I just don't. I mean, and, and more importantly, I, I want, you know, Mahomes to be there because he's healthy. I, I want him to be healthy. I want him to be healthy because uh, if, if you you win a game with a backup quarterback, it's you know, okay. You go to the Super Bowl, great, wonderful. Don't get me wrong. But if you're going and beating a backup quarterback to go to that, it's not as great a feeling. Oh, it's still a great feeling, don't get me wrong, but it's not a great, it's not as great a feeling. I will, classic example, when the Bills beat the Chiefs the last time these two teams played in the AFC Championship game, which would have been 93, I was at the game. Uh, I was at, at, back then it was Rich Stadium. Uh, I was at the game, and I—if you drew a line from where Montana's head hit the turf, drew a line straight back, I was right in line with that. And and I could hear amongst the eighty thousand people screaming like crazy people, I could hear Montana's head bounce off the artificial turf, and you pretty much knew oh, he's done. 
He's just that's it. He's done. And some of the air was left out of the let out of the stadium. It, don't get me wrong. I mean, we still celebrated when the Bills won, obviously, but some of the air was let out of the stadium because you know, arguably the goat. He's playing against Buffalo. He's you know, only this is Joe friggin' Montana, the guy's the guy's money in the postseason. Uh, you know, and and he gets out of he gets knocked out of the game. It, it sucks to see that. Uh, you know, no, it didn't suck that the Bills won, but it it sucked that Montana got knocked out of the game. I hope Patrick Mahomes plays on Sunday night, uh, and, and it should be an interesting night. Uh, long range forecast, and it's still long range uh, since it's Tuesday. Rain in the forecast. No, no longer a wintry mix. Right now, it's just rain. We'll see what happens. It rained the last time those two teams played each other. It was a horrible night in Buffalo the last time uh, these two teams played each other. Kansas City just drubbed Buffalo uh, in Orchard Park in a rainy night in Orchard Park. Anyway, 330-886-0813. MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. We're back in a bit. Stick around. No matter what the weather, be prepared with a reliable, efficient, rude gas furnace or air conditioner from MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. Call your energy-efficient expert, MP Vivo, today for a free estimate. Here at MP Vivo, we rely on rude, and so should you. Myers Family Insurance knows the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. High-res future cast shows steady snow for the next few hours. Still just downright cold. It is bitter out there. Several strong bands of lake effect snow. Wind is kind of the big story today as well. So if you need a more detailed winter forecast on WFMJ.com and the Storm Tracker 21 app. I went to Greenwood Chevrolet because I was really interested in looking at the tracks. Because I wanted my dream truck. Because I've been going there for 20 years. I'm really happy that I went to Greenwood Chevrolet. Because they really went the extra mile for me. Now we're going the extra mile for you, only at Greenwood Chevrolet. WRS Wealth Advisors is the area's premier wealth and retirement specialist. With our combined 70 years experience and comprehensive wealth strategy, we assist our clients attain their goals. Call 330-965-0370 to learn more about our individual and corporate financial planning services or visit wrswealthadvisors.com. Good luck, athletes. Hi, everyone. This is DJ Yokely with Your Sports Network. We appreciate your support of YSN and welcome you to the YSN family. Our broadcast streams are brought to you live at no cost to you by sponsors that are local to this community. Without the vision and generosity of our sponsors and partners, we would not be able to bring this game to you today. So please support the great businesses and leaders that are making this game possible. And if you're a business in need of great advertising and sponsorship opportunities, feel free to head over to our site for more information on the right fit for you. We are local, we are loyal, and we are live. We are YSN. Ah, the details. Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods is one fine ride. Perfect cornering, superb handling, sporty and stylish, power to spare, plus awesome mileage. Yeah, jaw-droppingly beautiful lines and well-appointed with luxurious trim. Put more oomph in your life and start beholding the molding. Find your home's fine hardwood at BairdBrothers.com. 
for heating, cooling, and indoor air quality. The Mahoney Valley trusts MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning, offering worry-free repair, service, and installation. Call MP Vivo today for a free estimate. MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. We're your energy efficient experts. Planning, Planning a project, project around, around your home or rental, rental property? Trust, trust the electrical, electrical service to the local experts with 62 years of serving the Mahoning Valley. Valley. Joe, Joe Dickey, Dickey Electric is your local go-to go source for responsive, reliable residential electrical, electrical work. From, from everyday maintenance and repairs to new installations, electrical upgrades, and, and safety inspections, inspections, no job is too big or too small. small. Call Joe, Joe Dickey Electric today, 800-549-3976, or visit DickeyElectric.com. That's DickeyElectric.com. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. I was doing some homework in the um, after the um, conversation with the uh, manager of the YSU baseball program. I, I know where Troy, Alabama is. I, I wanted to make sure that I was right with this. I believe it is south of Montgomery, uh, Alabama. Uh, it is um, about 100 and some odd miles from the Gulf Coast. But it's it's in uh, South Alabama, uh, really nice part of the state of Alabama, and nice in terms of the average high in the month of February is in the low to mid sixties. So you um, you'll get some decent weather, hopefully, if if everything if everything falls into place, uh, it, they'll get some decent weather down there. And then Thibodeau, Louisiana. Uh, <clears throat> it is normally it, about uh, 10 degrees warmer down there. So upper 60s, low 70s. That'll be some nice weather down there as well. Hopefully everything cooperates. Uh, let's get to the uh, MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline where we find Emmanuel. What's going on, brother? How you doing, my brother? I'm good, man. You know, um, I hope you recorded your last two um, interviews because those are two guys that um, – I defer to. All you have to do is look at their resumes, and uh, they just get it, and they've had it for a long time, and uh, it was it was it was just great. They're two great interviews, and I want to thank you for that. Oh, no problem. Now, well, of course, I, I was going to ask you, but uh, but uh, coach coach uh, he, he explained it. I was going to ask you about we'll be able to see the baseball games, and I guess he said that we can go, come come see them. Yes, you you should be able to go see the uh, the baseball games at, at Eastwood Field. Uh, now, hopefully, fingers crossed. Hopefully, uh, there won't be a lot of COVID restrictions. Uh, you know, as of right now, I, I would say that um, I would say that everything should be in order uh, as of right now. But you know, fingers crossed. We'll see what happens. Yeah, it is with the COVID, with the virus. You never know. Heck, we got a new president tomorrow. You never know; anything yeah. can happen. Well, but it, my question. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, it's uh, tomorrow's <laughs> going to be an interesting day. We'll we'll let that one go. It's going to be an okay. interesting day. No, 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 no. Once again, like I said, I, I, I defer to the skipper. Fifty game schedule. You think a good season win win in thirty games? I think if they can go thirty and twenty, I I, I would be happy with that. Uh, I I would be very happy with that, considering the fact that. You know, again, um, the the Penguins had never been above five hundred. Uh, now this this past year or last year, I should say, uh, they only played fourteen games, but they were seven and seven, uh, and they were in non conference games. And we were just about to get into conference play when things started uh, going sideways, and then everything uh, everything fell apart. Um, I think that. There should be a reason for optimism at, at YSU. I, I think that this program should be able to get above 500. Uh, I think 30 and 20 would be uh, would be an outstanding step in the right direction. And, and given the talent that is that is coming back, uh, I, I think that 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 is something that the Penguins could shoot for. Uh, I don't see them being much better than 30 and 20. Uh, but I, I think that thirty and twenty is certainly a goal worth shooting for. Absolutely. Well, I, I know uh, sitting in the stands when uh, when they played Ohio State at uh, Eastwood, I knew that their program. We talked about it. I knew that, that the program was 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 going in a different direction, and I knew their program was going to you know be a lot better. Well, what what grade would you give, or uh, what's your opinion on from the time they played Ohio State? Of course, you know you got the virus, you had the injuries and things. That was a very young team, 
that uh that, that uh played Ohio State uh that, that that day, and they had great pitching, great pitching staff. Have they developed like they should? I don't know what what I'm saying is. What do you think the difference between then and now? Positive, negative, or what, what have you seen? Well, I, I don't think that I don't think it's fair to evaluate last year. Uh, with a whole totalitarian um, type of season because they only played 14 games. What I saw from the Penguins in the 14 games was plenty of opportunities to grow uh, as a team, to to get a whole lot better. Uh, There were times when this team played exceptionally well, uh, and then there were times where this team played – much like they've played in previous years where they struggled, whether it was in the field, uh, on defense, uh, whether it was uh, on the mound or or hitting. Uh, there were times when this team did not look uh, like a team that was ready to take the next step. But then there were times during that 14-game stretch where this team was more than ready to take a stretch. you got to remember, they took two out of three against Houston. Going into that series to open up last year, the Houston Cougars were a top thirty-five baseball team. That that's and if you go and take, I, two I, out I, of three, I would say top twenty-five. I would at that time I would say top twenty-five because they had a, they, they hit the ball pretty good. But go ahead, that's well, my opinion. And, and the, the experts Houston. and the, the folks at Baseball America and the Collegiate Baseball uh, uh, publications they had them in the top thirty-five. And, and okay, I'm going to okay. trust them long before. Long before I start reading uh, other materials, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm definitely going to trust the folks at Baseball America and the Collegiate Baseball uh, magazines because they do a really good job covering this game. Uh, they put them in the top 35. I got no problems. Top 25, top 35. Okay, I'm, I'm good with that. They took two out of three from Houston, and along the way, you saw in that series, man, these guys are very capable of being a very good mid-major team that is going to give a lot of people problems during the course of the season. Then I saw them play against the College of Charleston. Now, the College of Charleston, much like Youngstown State, a mid-major team, the only difference is College of Charleston has a environment where you can play baseball a little bit longer than the kind of baseball that we play in the North. College of Charleston swept Youngstown three straight. And YSU gave them a good game, a couple of games. They got blown out in one game. And you saw remnants of, okay, this team this team has an opportunity to really be solid. And then a couple of games where you're like, uh, at times this team looks like a regular Youngstown State team below 500 that is, is going to be tough to watch. But – it's. I think that this team, through the course of the 14 games, Emmanuel, last year, I think this team was starting to make inroads where they were going to be a very good team come league tournament or come league play. And, and I think that you're going to see more of that uh, in 2021. I think if this team is healthy, and knock on wood that this team is healthy, I think you are going to see a top four baseball team coming out of the Horizon League and I think that this team will be in the Horizon League tournament. Uh can they beat a Wright State? Can they beat a Northern Kentucky? Uh we'll see. We'll see what they can do. Well, you know, I I, I think I would take, you know, my odds against anybody in a three game series with uh with YSU. I think the potential the potential is there. They may not win at all, but uh I, I think, you know, fingers crossed like you said I mean, if this new normal is crazy, but if the new normal stays the new normal, I think um, because this team, they're um, they're a good unit. I heard I heard you you and the coach talk, or you and the skipper talk, and 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 they seem like they're a family. You know, just hanging out together, and, yeah. and you know, in baseball, that means a lot. Well, listen, I saw it firsthand. Even when they were, you know, the the, the series when we were in South Carolina, uh, they were beaten three straight. Uh, you know that could that could really wreak havoc on 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 some folks. Look, these kids were having a blast, and the camaraderie that I saw with these kids uh, when we were in the hotels, 
uh, the camaraderie that I saw with the kids away from the diamond. Uh, you know, we're, we're in a restaurant, we're eating pizza, which wasn't as good anywhere close to resembling Youngstown. Well, you, well you, left, you left off Jambalaya when you was talking about uh, Louisiana, but go ahead. Well, listen, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jum, Jambalaya, jambalaya and, and, uh, and, and, um. But uh, I don't like couscous. You like couscous that no, fried up, um, no, no, I don't like that. No. Let, me, let me, let me, let me tell you one that is a sneaky good food in Louisiana. Have you ever had crawfish? Yeah, crawfish is sneaky good. I love. I listen. I I, I I I like eating them. I like eating them just plain boiled. Yeah, you know, you you, you throw potatoes in there, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You throw yeah. a little bit of onions, yeah. right? And, you know, and then uh, and then you just pop it. And pff, there you go. I yeah. can eat them all day. You got to. You, you can't take... give. You can't get big ones up here. No, no, little, God, you know, no. Yeah. No, no. You, you. Yeah. I mean, you don't get southern cuisine up here. It, it's people who will mm. say you get southern cuisine. You're not getting southern southern cuisine. It, it not, let me let me backtrack. There is one or two places that I would recommend for anyone uh, to do southern yeah, cuisine but, but, around. But here. he goes he, he he goes to other places and bring it back here. No, exactly. He has the best. <laughs> exactly. Know, he, he can get it, but but it's, but it's not it's not it, readily here. Yeah, but he'll it, get it yeah. for you. It, it, it ain't readily here. You, you you hit the nail on the head. But no, the first time I experienced crawfish. Um, Bobby Dickerson, uh, who is now, I think he's in the Padres organization. No, he's in the Phillies organization. Uh, anyway, he invited everyone over. We had an off day, uh, and we were to play Mobile. Uh, so we had an off day. We went to his place on our way to Mobile. We had a blowout at his place. Just had a grand old time. And he had a whole, just a big old pot full of crawfish. You never, you never seen a bunch of guys tearing off body parts and eating crawfish. I, I swear to God, this place, it, it, we had hundreds of dead carcasses running around with crawfish all over the place. And, and, and you always got one person that you throw out the restaurant that want to eat it with a fork. Do put that fork down. No, no, no yeah, exactly. I was, like, I was like, what the hell are you doing with that fork? Put that stuff down. Get your get your hands dirty here. Come on now. Uh, oh, and, 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 and the last thing, um, I, I, uh, 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 my family and, and all your listeners, uh, send our best wishes to the young lady that got hurt in the basketball game. And, um Kudos to Poland and South Range. Those, those are two great, uh, not only uh, uh, teams in the high schools, it's great communities. But once again, Ron, thanks for taking my phone hey, hey, call. Let me, and I talk, l- yeah. let, me, let me ask you, because, uh, you know, it's been we, – we, you haven't brought up Corey Kluber yet. Yankees signed Corey Kluber to a uh, to a contract. One uh, year there. Well, you know, but see, but I, I always told you, I always told you it was not going to be a good fit. I told you that a while back. Now, the, the, bottom, the bottom line is, we're going to see how he fits. What I'm, what I'm, what I'm sitting back thinking about now, they're trying to swing a deal with the Yankees to get Lindor. So I don't know. I mean, well, Lindor's a Met now. Yeah, Lindor, Lindor is a Met now. Yeah, they're they trying to swing a deal with the Mets to get him. No, 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 no. He, he's gonna he's gonna stay in New York with the Mets. He's gonna he's gonna he's gonna play with the Mets. Let me let me. You just, haven't heard you, you haven't heard that you haven't you haven't heard that rumor. No, nah, that ain't gonna happen. That's that's Yankee <sighs> fantasy land talking right there. Listen, let me let me tell you what you got with Corey Kluber. Whether he's back to his normal self or not, Corey Kluber is going to be the biggest acquisition that the New York make that the New York Yankees make in the off season and it is going to help your team for years to come and the reason for that is he is the kind of guy that is going to command attention from every single top farm team prospect type of pitcher that the Yankees have and the Yankees aren't stupid they they know exactly what they have in Corey Kluber, he may not be the Cy Young Award-winning Corey Kluber, the guy with the with the with the best slider uh, on on the planet. He may not be that guy anymore. But what he is is a guy that will teach all of those young kids, all of those hot shot prospects that the Yankees have, how to go about your business. Trust me when I tell I doubt you. It. I, I doubt it because you know he, he he's one of those guys too that was using that magic invisible stuff. Trust Emmanuel, a Trust me when I tell you. So, so, so you telling me? 
no, no, no. You, you're telling me that we, we we just touched on this a little bit, right? But you're trying to tell me that it didn't make a difference with the, with with, the, with those pitchers that was using that magic stuff on on, on the rods. And you can't tell me that that didn't make them a better pitcher. Of course it does. Okay, they can't they can't do that anymore unless they got something to replace well, it. Uh, listen, I mean, at, at, I'm cheating listening. cheating is encouraged in baseball if you haven't noticed already. And and look, it, it, it's um, I'll, I'll equate. I'll, I'll equate pitching to radar detectors. You know those radar detectors that are always uh, first to the line? You, back in the day, mm-hmm. when, when guys used to have radar detectors in their car and they'd go a million mm-hmm. miles an hour up the, up the interstate, and, and, mm-hmm. they're like, and the argument is, well, I got the up-to-date radar. Ain't nobody going to be catching me because this thing's going to detect a Smokey from five miles away. Well, the Smokies are always uh, a, a step or two ahead of the consumers it, it's the same thing with with the pitching it, the the people that have caught on to this whole oh we have the ingredients to do this 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 let me tell you something the guys that are that have the ingredients are two steps ahead of the guys that caught the the ingredients two steps ago in what other words you think is- in other words there's going to be guys that are still going to get ridiculous spin rate that are still going to be throwing fastballs, that are still going to have plenty of movement, and are still going to be using illegal substances because they're two steps ahead of the process. Now, listen, I I, 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 I understand that, that that we had our thing with 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 with, with, with our pitchers, right? And and, and, and and we had a lefty that, that squealed on everybody. But I just don't think that's good for baseball. And I don't think and I don't think it's mighty funny that uh, the, 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 the the top pitchers past and present in the last five years, just about all of them was using that. Well, I mean, again, rule number one in the game of if the game of baseball, cheating is encouraged. And, and and if you don't get caught, then you've you've done a pretty good job. Uh look, and and in all seriousness, what Corey Kluber will bring to the table is he will teach these kids not to throw sticky substance uh, type of pitching. Throw the sticky stuff out the window. The guy is a bona fide teacher, and he has a lot of cachet. And I think one of the reasons why the Yankees signed him, not only to protect themselves from the eventual exit of Tanaka, who's going to go back to Japan, but this guy is going to have the attention of the top prospects in the Yankee organization. Then why, then why, then why is it just a one-year deal? Because you obviously have to produce on the field. But in that one year, he's going to have the ear of that of, of those kids. And if and if those some of those kids get to the major leagues, the best person that you can hang out at, with as a rookie is a guy like a Corey Kluber, a guy who does not does not hold any secrets. He's the kind of guy, and I've... I've he's I've, an open book, man. He's, I don't he look is. that good in New York. He's, a, he's an <laughs> open book, and he will try to teach anyone that wants to go to his locker and start asking for advice. He's going to be the first person that's going to give the advice and, and, and say, hey, stick with me, and, and let me show you how to go about your daily business. If you get a lot of kids that listen to this guy, Emmanuel, I'm going to tell you right now, whether Corey Kluber becomes Corey Kluber of 2015 or 2016, which probably isn't going to happen, or whether he's a mediocre pitcher, what he's going to be able to do for the future New York Yankee pitchers is immeasurable. We're trying to win right, right now, man. Well, I know you're trying you just, to win right you just, now. You just, you, just, you just described the pitching coach. He, might, he has to win at least 14 games. He has to. Well, given the fact that you got some serious offense, he may be able to win 14 games, but he could have an ERA over five winning 14 games because y'all are going to probably score seven or eight runs again. As long as you win. He has to win 14 games. He well, has to. I mean, you know, if you get him healthy, uh, and, and, and with that offense, uh, I would take my chances on 14 wins if, if, if the Yankee offense is healthy. I mean, look, I mean, so, what, what so was it, it about? It, it, what was it about four years ago? Ivan Nova had an ERA pushing five, and he won sixteen games with the yeah, Yankees. But, but, yeah, but what, 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 what I'm saying is this: what I'm saying is this. Am I am I underestimating this move? Because I figure, okay, that's we, we got another arm, you know. Uh, but I didn't understand the background what you said. But I'm I, I'm just not impressed with his pitching. 
It, and when, when, when the Indians, the Indians got rid of him, and still kept a, a, a great pitching staff. He wasn't even the best on the Indians team. Well, the, one of the reasons why that pitching staff is where it is is because all those guys hung out with Corey Kluber. And, okay. and and Shane Bieber will be the first to sit back and say, "I learned more about you know the the, the game itself from a Corey Kluber." The, the the example that he gave all of the young kids, we're living that example right now. That's what I'm telling you from, from the future of the New York Yankees, the prospects that are going to be going to spring training in Tampa. You know, you hang around a Corey Kluber and you start learning from this guy. You know, those. Those things are going to give the Yankees, uh, long term, a really, really nice, uh, a nice environment. But and, as far as Kluber we, pitching, it's six one half dozen of the other. I don't think he has much left. Uh, but then again, he might bounce back. He he had been he had been injured the last couple of years. Who knows? Maybe some of that magic is back. Well, all, all, all I know is. You know, you you pointed out something that uh, that has been missing that I know has been missing, ever since uh, 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 CC Sabathia retired. You know, the, when CC was in the dugout, it was a different dugout. And, and if he can come in there and be that guy like CC was, you know, because CC was in his career, he was, you know, he know he wasn't top dog anymore, but he was great to have in the dugout. So that might work out, Ron. I'm a, I'm gonna check into that. Well, I think that his presence in that clubhouse. Uh, provided that he makes the team, provided that he's healthy, uh, his presence in the clubhouse is going to be a good thing for the Yankees. No two ways about that. Well, well, that's see, you know, that, that's come. I didn't really want to talk about it, you know, because really, I I just didn't see it as a big deal. But I guess it's a bigger deal than um, than I thought. But I tell you one thing: two things I know for certain. Number one, we'll see, and number two, me and you're going to talk about it. I'll talk to you later, my brother. All right, man. Be good. 330-886-0813. I know it's for Indians and Pirates fans. It's probably. Do we really have to play baseball this year? Both of our teams aren't going to be all that good. Well, you know, it's less than a month away. Pitchers and catchers are reporting less than a month away. What is it? Uh, if I include today, uh, 12, 13, uh, 27 days. 27 days. Pitchers and catchers report actually twenty eight. I beg your pardon, uh, twenty eight days to uh, to pitchers and catchers reporting. I'm excited. I mean, I know my team's going to struggle this year. I get it. I understand that. I embrace it. It's you know they're going to struggle this year, especially offensively. I'm I'm still trying to figure out. <laughs> All right, you took Lindor off this team. Uh, short term, not good. Long term, you could hose the Mets long term, but. Short term, not good. Hey, by the way, the NFL just made this official. Sarah Thomas is going to be the first woman to referee in a Super Bowl. Uh, she is go- she, she's not going to be the referee. I beg your pardon. She is going to be the first woman to uh, be an official in, uh, in the Super Bowl. Uh, Sarah Thomas is going to be the down judge. She's one of the seven or eight uh, officials that will be working in Super Bowl 55 in Tampa. Uh, Sarah Thomas is the down judge at Super Bowl 55. She becomes the first woman to officiate in a Super Bowl. Congratulations. Uh, to be back with more, it is a Tuesday edition of Running Point. Presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. 21 News. Let's get right to our top story tonight. More experienced reporters. A new Wilmington arrest. Yeah, in Lordstown. Telling more local stories. We'll look at efforts. Boy is curb. recovering from a broken. Around our Good valley. Good afternoon. Community in Niles. Here in Youngstown. Right up. Because you expect. It's important for everyone. No place like Youngstown. Youngstown. More local news. In Mercer County Before Court. Become life threat. 21 News is our valley's number one local news. Welcome home to a home made homier with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. Inspiration starts at BairdBrothers.com and is turned into reality when high quality hardwoods are delivered right to your home. Baird Brothers has the latest design trends, shiplap and skinny lap interior siding, antique oak rustic flooring, and, well, you'll find them all at BairdBrothers.com. Ordered easily, delivered conveniently, enjoyed comfortably. BairdBrothers.com. 
WRS Wealth Advisors, the area's premier wealth and retirement specialists. Located on South Avenue in Boardman. Hi, this is Jim Myers with Myers Family Insurance, your local Medicare and retirement resource. We're excited to have sports back. Whether you're on the field or cheering from the stands, sports unifies communities and brings hope for the future. We're all one team working together. At Myers Family Insurance, we know the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. Hi, I'm Colin Chupa. And I'm Kelsey Clem from K-Squared Marketing. Our boutique marketing firm specializes in media planning and buying, public relations, event marketing strategies, and strategic sponsorships. We can integrate our services with your existing game plan, or we can be your entire marketing team. Your goals, our game plan. Let's, Let's win, win together. together. Call K-Squared Marketing at 330-623-2730 or visit ksquared.marketing to learn more. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Points presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Plenty, plenty, plenty of basketball games on the network tonight. Here you go. Uh, you got girls basketball tonight from the Fieldhouse in Struthers. The Girard girls will be taking on Struthers. That game will be starting at about 530 uh, and then at 6.45, somewhere thereabouts, closer to 7 perhaps, the uh, Gerard boys will be playing Struthers uh, at the iconic field house tonight. Uh, the rest of these games will be starting at 7 o'clock. Keep in mind, keep in mind, uh, the JV game gets underway at 5.30, depending on how fast the JV game goes. Uh, the varsity game could start a little before 7, could start a little after 7. Depends on how fast the... Um, JV games go. Uh, boys basketball tonight. Boardman is at Canfield. Lowellville is at Columbiana. Cheney will be uh, venturing to the other side of the city as they take on the East High Golden Bears. Uh, girls basketball. It'll be Wellsville at Edison. Boys basketball. Crestview will be taking on LeBray. Uh, keep in mind, Drake Golden is uh, either seven or eight points from setting the all-time record for most points scored by a uh, boys basketball player at Crestview High School. Uh, I believe uh, Drake is either seven or eight points from that record, uh, and there's a pretty good chance that he breaks it tonight at LeBray High School. Uh, that game should start somewhere around 7 o'clock tonight on the network. Sebring is at Letonia, and since I don't have a game to do tonight, I'm going to head over to Letonia and watch my uh, watch my alma mater play Sebring and uh, watch Coach D and and the kids. By the way, and, and I have to knock on wood when I say this because I don't want to jinx anybody, since Letonia got their entire team back, Marco Ferry and uh, Joey Guido now back from illness and, and COVID, respectively, uh, injury, illness, COVID, respectively. Uh, they have not lost a game since the lineup has come back. Full 100% lineup. They have yet to lose a game. I knock on wood as I say that. McDonald is at Liberty. Western Reserve is at Lisbon. Marlington will be at Louisville. Uh, girls basketball. Louisville will venture to McDonald to take on the McDonald girls. Uh, boys basketball, Poland at Springfield. Oh, this will be a good game. Solid test for both basketball teams as Poland will be taking on Springfield uh, at Springfield. And finally, girls basketball tonight from Ursland. The Hubbard girls taking on the Ursland girls. Uh, all of those games will be starting at 7 o'clock. And again, varsity uh, game somewhere around 7 JV games are supposed to start about 5.30. Uh, varsity games could be starting before 7 o'clock, could be starting after 7 o'clock. It just depends on how fast the junior varsity game uh, goes. But plenty, plenty, plenty of basketball games on the network tonight, and it, uh, it should be fun. Should be fun to watch. Speaking of Hubbard, uh, completely unrelated to, um, to sports, but certainly for the uh, for the town of Hubbard, 
horrible, horrible fire last night uh, that did some heavy damage to one of the more beautiful churches uh, in the entire area. St. Patrick's Church uh, at Hubbard uh, fire uh, heavily damaged that uh, that church um, last night, and that is a um, that is a uh, that's a church in in town that is very. Uh, very important uh, to the uh, to the town of uh, of Hubbard, and our thoughts and prayers go out not only to the parish, uh, to the uh, to the St. Patrick's uh, members of the St. Patrick's Church, uh, but to also the entire uh, village of Hubbard. Hopefully, uh, that church gets rebuilt uh, as quickly as possible. That was just horrible to see, um, just a terrible, terrible, uh, terrible footage. Uh, yesterday uh, from that fire and hopefully uh, everyone is okay and and more importantly uh, that church gets rebuilt as soon as possible made mention in the one o'clock hour uh, when we were talking YSU women's basketball and by the way we'll do this on Thursday uh, when Dre Smith calls in the program at one o'clock NECA Obeiser the YSU sensational freshman from Minnesota uh, for the second consecutive week, she was named the Horizon League Freshman of the Week. She has now claimed the award uh, in uh, two of the last three weeks. Uh, she was one rebound away from averaging a double-double. Uh, she had 21 points and 19 rebounds in the two victories at UIC. Uh, one rebound away from averaging a double-double. Uh, that that's not too shabby. Uh, th- this is, and then I've said this on the uh, amount of times that I have seen the YSU women play. Uh, when Richie Giuliano and I do the broadcasts uh, on ESPN three or ESPN plus, if you will, this young lady does not play like a freshman. She just does not play uh, like a freshman. Six games, uh, she is averaging eight point three rebounds per game. Fourth in the league in field goal percentage at 47.6%. And she's 12th in the league in scoring at 12.5 points a game. YSU will be home to Detroit Mercy on Saturday afternoon and, I'm sorry, Friday afternoon and Saturday afternoon. As um, the Penguins, uh, the the men and women are going to be playing a doubleheader. uh, Two and five o'clock on uh, Friday and Saturday. And uh, man. Really good to see the YSU women uh, after the after the slow start. They they started off the season zero uh, and three, and again this is a team that had been dealing with COVID not once but twice, killed the entire non conference portion of their schedule, and it also killed the first four games of the Horizon League regular season schedule. To where Youngstown State is going to be playing just sixteen games. In their schedule. They're not going to have a 20-game Horizon League schedule. They will have only played 16 regular season games when this team goes to the tournament. Uh, that That's oof, not good. But the good news for the, for the Penguins is the fact that this team, after losing their first three games, they have now won their last three games. And they have an opportunity... Because they're going to be playing some teams in the in the back half of the standings. There's an opportunity for this team to really make a push to get into the top four. And again, every team is going to be going to the tournament. Top four teams, from what I understand, top four teams are going to get a bye automatically into the quarterfinals. So then the five would play the 12, the four plays the 11, uh, the... I'm sorry, the 5 plays the 12, uh, the, the 6 plays the 11, the 7 plays the 10, the 8 plays the 9, uh, and then the winners will move on to the quarterfinals, and the top seed gets the highest seed remaining. So let's say the 12 seed upsets the 5 seed. Now all of a sudden the, the 12 seed automatically goes and plays the number 1 seed. Uh, so it's, it's going to be interesting uh, to see what happens. And again, the, the YSU women... Definitely have an opportunity, although they probably, you know, 10 games left in the in the regular season, they're probably going to have to go 8-2 and two, uh, 
uh, you know, to go 11 and five, and that would, in all likelihood, get them into the top four. YSU men have a really steep hill to climb. Uh, look, three and seven, and this is a team. And and, and in all fairness, and, and, and you, we have to be fair about this. It's this is this is not a a, a team that is you know that oh well they they just they've underachieved. This is a team that has lost a really important piece to to the club, and that's Darius Quisenberry. So Quisenberry's been out for a little while. Well, this team's they're down at the bottom right now, three and seven. Now, the good news for the Penguins is eight of their last ten games will be played at Beagley. And the better news is uh, they have an opportunity, if Quisenberry is able to get back, to get hot before the start of tournament play. And that's the bottom line. If you get hot before the tournament starts, let's say that in these last ten games, Penguins win eight of their last ten. Okay, now you're looking at 11-9. and nine. Uh, in in the regular season, uh, and fourteen and uh, nine uh, for the entire regular season, and you go into the tournaments having won eight of their last ten games. If if the Penguins can do that, I'll take it. I'll take that in a heartbeat. If I win eight of my last ten games, I'm going into the tournament red hot, and I'm going into the tournament raring to go. Yeah, and obviously, you know, before the season started, everyone was thinking, and let's be honest, I think a lot of people were thinking they were going to be in Cleveland State's shoes. Cleveland State right now, if you haven't seen this, the Vikings are 9-1. and one. They're leading the Horizon League. They're 9-1. and one. Now, they're 9-4 and four overall, but they're 9-1 and one in the Horizon League. They have a two-game lead on Wright State. They split with Wright State last weekend. They have a two-game lead on Wright State right now. And, you know, barring a disastrous second half of the season, Cleveland State's going to finish in the top four. And they'll get a bye into the quarterfinals. They will, barring a disaster. Uh, that's that's what's going to happen. And I'm sure Youngstown State would have, you know, were thinking along the lines of 7-3, and 8-2, and 9-1, and one, first 10 games of the season. Well, it didn't turn out that way. Unfortunately, injuries and and other stuff, and Penguins are three and seven, so they got a mountain to climb. But the good news is, get hot in the second half, things can happen. Good things can happen. All right, three three zero eight eight six zero eight one three. The MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. Take a time out and uh, take some phone calls. Uh, we'll uh, revisit this uh, deal with the Pirates, and we'll uh, revisit the. Uh, YSN network uh, schedule for tonight. A lot of boys and some girls games uh, smattered in there as well. We've said, hey, being that Trumbull County and some of the city series schools need to uh, n- need to play some games uh, because they've they've missed some games. There's going to be opportunities where the guys are going to play on a normal girls' night and the girls are going to play on a normal guys' night. Well, we've got girls playing on a guys' night. Uh, We'll get through the schedule and a bunch of other things. Stick around. More to come on this Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austintown. Baird Brothers remains your source for fine hardwood products. For the time being, we're open for customer pickup only on weekdays, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturday from 9 a.m. till noon. Place your order online at BairdBrothers.com. Baird Brothers, for the place you love. Quality, customer service, and integrity. Those are the four words that have driven our success since 1957 at Joe Dickey Electric. Joe Dickey Electric is one Mahoning Valley landmark business that stays current with the requirements of our customers. Family owned and managed, we are an electrical contractor and energy solutions provider. Every member of our team adds to his or her skill set through ongoing training. Residential, commercial, industrial, automotive, and more. We keep ahead of the needs of our customers with a fleet of more than 50 vehicles and 24-7 emergency service, so you're never left in the dark. The 4M company, being an architect and construction manager for over 40 years, has had the opportunity to use many different electrical businesses for our projects. The depth, quality, and knowledge and attention to detail displayed by Dickey Electric makes them stand out above all the rest. 
For state-of-the-art expertise and a timeless commitment to our customers, contact Joe Dickey Electric. We are everything electrical. I went to Greenwood Chevrolet because I was really interested in looking at the tracks. Because I wanted my dream truck. Because I've been going there for 20 years. I think whenever we go there, whatever car we're looking for, they have tremendous inventory. If you're looking for people who care about you, Greenwood is, is the place to go. You know, it's like family there. The girls know me in service. It's Miss Kim and the Tahoe. I'm really happy that I went to Greenwood Chevrolet. Because they really went the extra mile for me. Now we're going the extra mile for you, only at Greenwood Chevrolet. Local teams are heating up the hardwoods, and you can keep up with all the action on and off the court with Five Guys Hoop News, all season long on 21 Sports. Hello, I'm Greg Burbick with G. Burbick Farms. For the last 100 years, my family has farmed in the Columbiana and Mountain Counties. I began raising cattle in 1996 with the goal of providing a better product for you and your family on the dinner table. Our grass-fed and grain-supplemented Black Angus beef were raised with no hormones, steroids, or antibiotics. We are known for our hometown-friendly service and incredible tasting products. We are locally owned and have customers across the tri-state area. Our products go from our farm to your family. Stop by our farm on New Buffalo Road or visit us on the web at gburbickfarms.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. G. Burbick Farms, it just tastes better. Hi, this is Tommy Clem, owner of WRS Insurance Solutions. WRS Insurance Solutions is a local, independent agency that specializes in life, Medicare, long-term care, and disability products. Call us at 330-953-3722 or visit us at wrsinsurancesolutions.com to learn more. Good luck to all the student-athletes in the Valley. Right now is a great time to get more for your trade-in at Tri-State Ford and drive home in a new or pre-owned vehicle. Choose from our great selection of new Ford models or pre-owned vehicles. Plus, get the Tri-State Ford Advantage, including a 10-year, 200,000-mile warranty and more. At Tri-State Ford, we'll pay you top dollar for your trade, but you don't have to purchase one of ours to sell us yours. Customer focus, community driven. Tri-State Ford East Liverpool or visit TriStateFord.net. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. If you're in the market for a brand new or slightly used automobile, before you make your final decision, you owe it to yourself to go to Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. I've been saying this for months. The sign of a great dealership, it's real simple. Sales department. Finance department, service department. If you have a really good sales, finance, and service department, you've got a great dealership. And believe me when I tell you, kids, Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town is a great dealership. So if you are in the market for a new or slightly used automobile, before you make your final decision, and let's be honest, Purchasing an automobile is probably the second biggest thing you're going to purchase in your lifetime, unless you're a small business owner and you're trying to purchase your own business. But historically, and you know, unless you're a small business owner, the car is going to be the second biggest thing that you're going to purchase next to your house if, if you're purchasing a home. The car is right up there. And you don't fool around with this. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a damn big purchase depending on how much money you're planning on spending, that's a, that's a pretty big purchase. So you, you want to do yourself right by going to various places and doing your homework and whatnot. Well, all I'm going to say is this. Before you make your final decision, go to Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. You will thank me 
later. Trust me, you'll thank me later on this one, okay? Go to Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town before you make your final decision on getting an automobile. Believe me, they'll win you over. Uh, yesterday, Pirates trading away Musgrove. Uh, Joe Musgrove uh, sent to the San Diego Padres. Now, Musgrove is a guy that, you know, I mean, he's a nice pitcher. He was nice with the uh, with the uh, Pirates. wasn't a great pitcher. I mean, he was a nice pitcher with the Pirates. He's going to provide some depth uh, to the to the Padres back of the rotation. Pirates getting uh, four kids in this deal turned out to be a three team deal when the uh, when the Pirates were actually given a fifth kid, uh, but then they traded that guy to the New York Mets. Uh, we'll get to the uh, to the Mets uh, acquisition uh, of the Pirates in a little bit. The four guys that the uh, that the Pirates got from the San Diego Padres, the the guy in this deal is Hudson Head. Head is a third round pick in the 2019 draft. Uh, he's ambidextrous. He was a ambidextrous quarterback in high school. Now I understand football and baseball are com- two completely different sports. Kids, athletic is all get out. Uh, he's a center fielder. He's 19. He turns 20 on April the 8th. He has bat speed. He can run like nobody's business. His 60-yard dash uh, is high-tier, high-quality 60-yard dash. Uh, he has, uh, according to the scouts and the Padres organization, uh, they drafted him in 2019. Um, he did not... Did not play uh, at any minor league baseball. They wanted to keep him uh, and and start him in 2020. Well, as it turns out, you didn't have minor league baseball in 2020. So he's yet to make his professional debut. When he was in the uh, um, uh, the camp after the season was over, you normally have a you normally have a two three week camp uh, for some of the top shot prospects uh, in in the uh, in post minor league baseball of 2019 people were saying he has the fastest bat speed of all the minor leaguers in the Padres organization this kid has some talent he has some really really good talent now the thing is he's never played a game you know an organizational professional baseball game he was drafted in 2019 he was set to make his debut in 2020 Obviously, they didn't have a minor league baseball season in 2020. It's going to be interesting. Uh, he came into the um, came into the uh, off season as a top ten ish prospect in the Padres organization. Omar Cruz, 21 year old left hander. Uh, the last time he was pitching, he was in low A ball in the Padre organization. Uh, he is a uh, he's a solid pitcher. Uh, 276 earned run average, 10 starts, low A, Fort Wayne. Uh, he was an instructional league. Uh, his fastball is is solid. He's starting to develop three pitches. Uh, he has the makings of being a middle of the rotation type of starter. Uh, David Bednar, uh, Pittsburgh native, had a cup of coffee with the uh, with the Padres. Uh, wound up uh, closing games in the. Um, in the Padres organization, uh, fastball in the mid upper 90s, upper 80s, split uh, split finger fastball, uh, and, and all you need are two pitches in, in the bullpen. He has those two pitches. He can throw a change up every now and then. Drake Fellows is another guy, uh, 22 years old, sixth round pick out of Vanderbilt. Uh, his slider is top shelf. Fastball is average. He was a starter at Vanderbilt. He will probably be a bullpen guy when the uh, when the Pirates uh, get their hands on him uh, this spring. And finally, Edney Rodriguez is a kid that they picked up uh, trading one of the prospects they got from the Padres, traded him straight up for Edney Rodriguez. Edney Rodriguez, the Mets number 20 prospect, he is a kid that has the potential to be a breakout type of a player. Uh, he could play first base. He could play the outfield. He could play catcher. He's going to probably wind up being a catcher because his tools are pretty solid behind the plate. Uh, he is a very good defensive catcher, has a pretty strong arm. Uh, he'll probably make his full season debut in low A ball 
uh, in 2021. He was in golf league uh, baseball in 2019, and of course, minor league baseball, no minor league baseball last year. He will probably start in low A ball, uh, and he's still two, three years out. He's going to be okay. Uh, Andy Rodriguez and Hudson Head are the two guys that Baseball America has said in their 2021 prospect handbook, which is going to be coming out pretty shortly, uh, in the 2021 prospect handbook, these two kids were breakout stars, breakout possibility uh, stars in minor league baseball. All right, we're going to quickly go to Tony before we get out of here. Tony, you still there, brother? I am. I am. Okay. Hey, uh, we'll, we'll follow it up uh, tomorrow because I did have a conversation with somebody about why that rule, the safety rules in place, not the safety, but the touchback rules in place. As but far I as, go back, uh, as, far as the ball go going out of bounds? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I want to go back to one of your great, your great memories. And it is good memory, though it was during a horrible Super Bowl for the Bills. Yeah. Remember when Leon let uh, pick up the fumble? Yes. And BB ran him down and swatted the ball out of his hand. What yes. happened to that ball? Uh, I don't know. It's a good question. Uh, I, I was trying to watch a video. I'm driving, but I didn't get it. It looked like he went out of bounds. Thus, it would have been awarded back to the Bills on the 20 yard line as a touchback going the other way. Yeah. Uh, and that's appropriate. Would you, have, after that lazy ass effort that Lett made in showboating, would you have rewarded him by giving them the ball on the two or the six or the eight yard line? No, I mean, if 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 I'm changing the rule, I'm put, I'm giving the ball to the offense on the on the twenty yard line, and 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 I see your point. I, I I agree with your point from that perspective, and and one of the reasons why this rule has never changed is because the infrequency of how this happens. And and your your point on on the other half of the this, end zones are a totally different. The point the the, the person I talked to you about, about the theory of it. The end zones are totally different than the rest of the football field. Entirely different. Okay. What happens if you get caught holding in the end zone? It's a safety. Right. But if if you get caught holding on the one yard line, it's half the distance to the goal. Okay, and I agree. It's a totally uh, different penalty. Tony, I agree with what you're saying, except for the fact. If, look, if the ball goes out of the end zone where it goes ten yards and then out of the end zone, I got no problems with giving the ball to the opposition. But if the ball goes out of the side of the end zone and not the back of the end zone, no, I'm not giving the ball to the defense on the 20 yard well, line. I, I guess my my point. First of all, Stefanski said we don't teach our people to reach out uh, in that position. Yeah. So, well, I mean, he was trying to do. He was trying uh, to get other, something extra. The other thing is, everybody knows the rule. You're that close to your ultimate objective. It's the game of war, is what it is. You're close, that close to scoring. Protect your ball. Here's the other. Here's another issue. If you fumble the ball into the end zone intentionally, and rec- the offense, rec- let's say a quarterback it rolls out and fumbles the ball into the end zone as the defense well, is converging it, on him, it, it, and he rolls the ball under the defense. Yeah, that's, that's a touchdown. If they uh, first, second, or third down. They recover as a touchdown. That's a holy roller. That that won't that wouldn't count as a touchdown. Uh, no, 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 no. That's that's not that's not universal. That's on fourth down. I would have to look that up. Yeah, so if you roll that ball and it goes out of the end zone, you deserve to be pun- punished. Well, for that. again, out of the end zone, yes. Out of the side of the end zone, no. You're not going to change my if, mind if, on this, if, Tony. If you fumble the okay, if you it, fumble it, the ball into the end zone, uh, it. It's risk and reward. You just got to be careful down there. You don't hold. You don't hold uh, in the end zone on the other end of the field for the same reason. Penalties are magnified in the I, end zone. I get it's it. A different part I, of the, I, I get it's it. A different part of the field. I get it. But and, and thanks for the call. I appreciate it. All I will say is this, and then we'll get out of here. If the ball goes into the back of the end zone, ten yards through the back of the end zone, I got no problems giving the ball to the defense. But if the ball goes out to the side of the end zone where it's two yards into the end zone and then it scoots out to the outside, to the end lines, I'm not giving the ball to the defense. I'm sorry, that's not happening. Big difference between having the ball go 10 yards and then out of the end zone and then only two yards and, and scooting to the uh, to the end line. I'm not giving the ball to the defense that way. If it goes out of the back end of the end zone, yeah, I'll give the ball to the defense because the offense had 10 yards to try to get that ball. All right, we're out of here. 
Uh, Power Hour is coming up next. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. We will talk tomorrow, noon to 3, running point on YSNlive.com.